Testing. Darren, yep. Ah, yes. So, yep. uh, hey, do me the favor of um, saying your name so that I don't mispronounce it. Yep. Um, Bala Pile. Bala Pile. Yes. yes. And I am Darren Stevenson. So, we are here in a conversation together that I wanted to record because it was becoming. Uh, as I expected it to, very interesting. Uh, Bala had been discussing something in um, uh, ideas from a specific person whose name you can say. Actually, maybe you could just go over briefly. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll do that. Um, what I was talking about is the notion of network state. Uh, as in N E T W O R K, second word state, S T A T E, network state. Um, chap called Balaji Srinivasan, quite a personality, known personality online, um, used to be CTO of um, Coinbase. But, you know, he's not just a crypto guy, he happens to know crypto, very well read, you know, history, background, people. You could summarize him as a pro anarchy guy, right? Who doesn't take limits of um, government and all that as limits. So, his his the, the, what the network state means is right. Um, you can form enough of the ethos and the uh, common call call it the commonwealth of a uh, group of people online. And then later, right, enough of the cohorts can, uh, this, uh, you know, uh, could have uh, agreed to where they want to stay and uh, live in a place where they are, uh, where they get along. Physically proximate. Other. Yeah. Right. Where they're physically and proximate so that they can collaborate in each other's <laughs> life development. Yep. Right. So that... Um, this is much more, it's not impossible to do at a distance. Yep. But it's much more difficult. Absolutely. Well, much there more. are more challenges. Um, yeah, it's just, it's a different space of challenge for sure. those who are not proximal. <clears throat> um, but you said something that I thought was hilarious. You were like, and brilliant. Well, I Go ahead. Okay. You were talking about somebody buying a house. Okay. Uh, the, the background to it is this, right? I've gone through um, all those states. What do I mean by all those states? You know, uh, living, um, grew up in a semi-rural village, you know, uh, where everybody knew everybody. And, you know, it, it's a tropical place so that you never worried about uh, money because it seemed like, um, why do you, you know, food was available all over the place and you could go and sleep in anybody's house. So what's your problem, you know, right? That was, um, and then, uh, but my parents uh, had moved from India to Malaysia, uh, uh, Darren, right? Mm -hmm. My father had gone through the struggles of life uh, in uh, India. And in some, in Malaysia, he was continuing it in, in Malaysia and he was driven to have, to have lots more money under the pillow, right? Mm -hmm. I'll yeah. spend on that if need later. He, he was just full on into like being a stingy guy who saves and saves and saves, and for good reason because of his background, right? Because he, he, right, many his people history. yeah, nearly starved to death under British rule in India, right? It was right. tough times, right? Uh, there were tough times. So in Malaysia, it's easier, but he didn't realize it that easier. So he, he went on a spree of, um, ah, so what he would do is buy one property upon property upon property and including our house itself, our, our, our what we call metric, our, the house, that family house. His only concern was what's the replay, you know, if you buy this house, uh, what's the replacement value? If I were to sell it, how much money would I get, you know? Um, he didn't care about uh, much anything else. And then, me, right, uh, has to pay for that because it has to completely broken up the family. As compared to 
you know, now my adopted village, um, Darren, is a village in uh, Indonesia, in Java. It's a zero crime village, <laughs> similar to the kind of village my father was born in, right? Uh, mm-hmm. but didn't live there on age 18. And there, the values fit with the village. The people, despite the rest of the world not wanting to have anything to do with zero crime villages, because <laughs> it's got consequences, <laughs> right? It's right. got consequences. For example, people won't be flaunting wealth because there won't be much wealth. It will be culturally communist, right? Yes. But yes. You, will, you will not worry about old age and children being taken care of because the people love to take care of other people. Especially yes, they are living in a traditional, a traditional context where everyone takes care. Not not every single person, but most of the people take care of each other, and yes. they understand. So this changes their role as a human being, right? Transforms yep. their role as a human being from yep. "I am here for me and mine." Yeah. Or just I am here for me mm. to we are here together for exactly. each other. Yeah. Yep. If you don't have um, that, I will argue if you don't have we are here together for each other, mm. you don't have humans yet. You have something that, weird. It. It's not human. That, that's it. And I, I want to stamp it even further. Well, I want to. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, by all means. Yeah. <laughs> Darren, I mean, I, I, I've grown up in like a fighting a lot of people, you know, um, probably post, um, you know, post university, even, I'm, even in university, it didn't occur to me. Many, maybe particularly from the 90s onwards. Okay, basically, I'm into unconditional love. Mm-hmm. and I hammered again and again Bala why are you being I mean, the idea? thing that I find hilarious about what you said mm-hmm. is that linguistically it's backwards it's not that you're into unconditional love it's that you didn't defect from it <laughs> <laughs> All right? like that's the natural yeah. position for human beings you simply didn't defect right in my view, but please continue. I, I'm with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, exactly because my mother and my, you know, grew up in such a place, so she didn't know anything, uh, anything else, and she went no. to great lengths. <laughs> oh my god! Of, you know consequences, and but leave all of those cause. You know, talking to you. One of the greatest things about talking to you, Darren, is you can talk about things that are you might have a long life thought it's a it's unconventional so kind of like censor that a bit you know um, yes. no you can do whatever you want so i love it you know okay yes so i loved you know my mother was the epitome of uh, unconditional love and i love that beautiful and, you know it, it didn't occur full on to me at that time right it occurred enough but because occurred enough as in you know, when the world became being difficult, there's one person that you could go to who has got time, patience for you. She'll listen and she won't, you know, uh, abruptly stop you halfway or say that that's a silly idea. She will take it that it's possible that her child may know something that she doesn't, you know, <laughs> right? And <laughs> that was so special, right? In this kind of like cruel world, right? That you had one Extremely person. Extremely beautiful, to, yes. Uh, you know, so yes. I wanted to continue that, and I was not going to b- b- stop uh, uh, agree with anybody who said it's impossible. You, you know, you can't. And later in life, of late, I've realized no, they many who say it's impossible are only saying it because they are, our narrative has so much become um, zero or hundred binary. Mm-hmm. It's like if something is not exact. You know, it's like, can you guarantee me that 100%, you know, that person who is uh, in your village, you can have unconditional love. Well, the, the real answer is, why do you even, why, do, why can't it be fuzzy at the edges? Say why again. Explain, even when we do math or graphs, 
you know, we cut off the extremes. And that's good enough if you can manage it 90%. But, you know, there are outliers, but you don't need to, like, spend your whole lifetime patching the last 2%, you know? <laughs> Okay, you've touched on something. Wait, slow down. You've touched on something I want to highlight. Please um, uh, nurture your line of thought and where you are going so that you can hold on to it for a second. Um, okay. But I want to say something, the zero 100 thing. So as children, uh, eventually we attempt things that are at least initially, they are impossible. Mm. Okay. Mm. It is initially mm. impossible for you to stand up. Mm. It is initially impossible for you to take a step. Mm. It is initially impossible for you to jump <laughs> mm. or run or walk or speak or swim or hold your breath underwater or ride a bicycle or write language. Yeah. Right. All of these things start out initially impossible. And if we evaluate them on the basis that is usually used in our cultures, pretty much nothing is possible because you can't, the only things that are possible are things where you go from zero to 100 in one move, right? In a single wow. move, never happened, right? Yep. So we do Great. have this mindset. And I was reading, I just want to share something from a book called The Dawn of Everything that I was reading last night. They're talking about um, our views of history being wrong. And we basically have two views. It was wonderful. We all took care of each other. And then we fell from that. And now it's every man for himself. And, you know, mm. and there's no way to change it. You know, the best you can hope for is slight adjustments to the tyrannical nonsense of human society. And I say this, um, along, as long ago as 1936, the prehistorian V. Gordon Child wrote a book called Man Makes Himself. Apart from the sexist language, this is the spirit we wish to invoke. We are projects of collective self-creation. What if we approached human history that way? What if we treat people from the beginning as imaginative, intelligent, playful creatures who deserve to be understood as such? What if instead of telling a story about how our species fell from some idyllic state of equality, we ask mm -hmm. how we came to be trapped in such tight conceptual shackles that we no longer even imagine the possibility of reinventing our societies. They say ourselves, but what they mean is our societies. Mm. We can't imagine it because it seems like it's, it's like a task like eating the moon or drinking the ocean. <laughs> so no one imagines that it's not only possible <laughs> It's necessary, it's urgent. Mm. Yep. The entire history and future of life on this planet may depend on the single, on this single pivot, right? Can humans form intelligent, aware collectives with and for each other and with and for the history and future of life on this planet? Now, of course we yep. can on the small scale. We can do it mm. immediately. Right? That's we can it. do it. You yep. and I are not going to have any problem doing that right here, right mm. now. We'll, we'll be yep. doing that together. Right? Um, yep. So That's it's it. immediately, if you just shrink the scale from everything to something, you can do it right now with any few people who are motivated mm. and sincere. You know, yeah. Please continue. Right, right on, right on. Uh, excellent. You know, so, so good to hear. <laughs> so good to hear. And, you know, um, much of it is um, 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 self, it's like self-fulfilling prophecy or self-created, meaning one of my biggest answer backs that's worked, right, against this notion is, uh, against this notion of um, it can't be done, you know, it's impossible, it's... Uh, 
this this whole um, hopelessness is, you know, guys, if we were living, you know, uh, before before the first village, right, and um, we would never the first village would never have happened. You know, like often I'll, I'll see in in, in um, online forums, um, Darren, right, who, who one mm. of the ones that you speak quite a lot in is uh, the one the P two P Foundation, right? Quite a lot of people mm. from around mm-hmm. the world, and often the, the the people are so good at at um, nitpicking, right? Right, um, and I'm like. By the way, these are people who ahead. probably never accomplish anything other than nitpicking. But go ahead. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. You know, right, they're professional and, nitpickers. Right, what do you do for a living? I sit around on a computer screen and pick nits. <laughs> you know? yeah. yeah. So I'm like saying, "Hey, look, right? Um, you, you know, just imagine, you know, if if our ancestors." With very little, they made the first village happen. If they could not get along, right? Uh, if they were egotistical, the first village would not have happened. In all likelihood, it would, it would have taken many attempts for the first village to um, to, to happen. You know, to to stay and be maintained, uh, continue as first village. But we know that it happened, and then it went on to become a small town, and and there was language, that, and there, so. If those people can kind of hold their negativity, their pessimism down a bit, right, to let the blossoming, as the blossoming they see in nature, right, despite all the earthquakes and whatever negativity, you know, there may be, there still is, you know, flowering and blooming and, you know, joy and uh, aesthetics um, uh, in, in, in nature, right? Mm-hmm. Um, why can't we, why can't we, Look at the good and ignore the bad, right? Unless the bad totally, you know, cannot be. Uh, um, uh, I right. If the house the catches on fire, we'll get some water. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know. But, um, uh, it's, it's. But it's, it's not it's a matter a, of ign- it's, okay. It's not a matter of this. It's a matter. I think, and by all means, correct me if you see it differently. Yeah. Yeah. It's a matter of. The okay, look, we got two different kinds of options, right? You can put humans together, you can get them to agree to come together as a group, let's say a small group, seven people, okay? Mm-hmm. And entirely. you can say again, yeah. I said entirely doable. I mean, nobody would yeah. uh, argue. No sane person can argue against that. If you said seven people, you know, like, oops, yeah. suddenly they have to stop, right? Because <laughs> right. My you can get seven people together and tell them either one of two things, okay? Mm-hmm. Either we're, you're just going to learn how to get along and help each other yeah. um, and be for each other and be together as one unit as well as being individuals. Mm-hmm. You're either going to learn how to do that or we're going to give you some principles, but the fundamental problem is that there has to be a catalyst, right? Mm-hmm. There has to be a profound catalyst that makes the people want to yeah. be together and mm-hmm. to grow together and to learn together. So either the catalyst, for most people, the catalyst is either the fear of really bad experiences of being human mm-hmm. or it's the it's FOMO. It's a version of FOMO. I know that being human can mean so much more than living in this box and watching television, but I don't know how to get to that. Mm. It's fear of missing out, right? Those are two highly motivated, highly motivating things. But the third highly motivating thing is a fire. Right? Like the village is on fire. <laughs> get up. Let's go. Right? Or... <laughs> Or, you know, in a city, you will, you will see humans form highly effective cooperative pods, little, little groups, right, pods, um, spontaneously, <clears throat> if there is a car accident, uh, if there is an yeah. earthquake, 
right? What will happen if there's an earthquake is you will see three things. The people who are sort of neutral, they don't know what the fuck to do, so they're kind of milling about. The people Ooh. who are um, acquisitive, these people are looking for opportunities to profit off the situation. And then people Ooh. who are, you know, they convert to altruists, right? We're going to help each other get through this right now. Hey, power to you. You remind me of something um, critical I want to ask, and I, you, I wanted to ask you. Um, hmm. Let me ask you, Eric, right? Of course. So, keep your thought along, but I want to ask you this. You mm -hmm. know, I've gone through a um, tough life situation in the last few years, right? And uh, one oh. of the things you say this for me has been a dog named Benji, right? My dog. <laughs> this has not surprised they, me even slightly. I'm listening. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. no surprise there. Now, I, I want to ask you this this one thing, and, and you know, it, it goes into the granular of um, unity is diversity. It's not that it's, don't don't once people don't have to riddle themselves with finding you know we can find unity within diversity or have, allow for diversity within unity. No, what you will find, you will always find something like your hand, right? Mm -hmm. Where you have yeah. a bunch of unique members, mm -hmm. and there's and there's no problem with the index finger being its own finger. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, yep. but they always work together for each other and the synergy that the palm right where they come together the synergy where the palm of the hand is that stuff yeah. is powerful in fact that's the stuff that makes most of the trouble <laughs> for humans <laughs> is is we're making the bad form of synergy right mm. we're like oh with synergy you can go faster you can get more you can you know, you can mutate and propagate wildly if you have synergy. But I'm listening. Yeah, if yeah. you, I didn't, I didn't hear your your question yet. You were talking about okay. diversity and unity. Go ahead. Good, good, good. The the, the the small subset within that. Okay. With my dog, right? The mm. dog loves to come and um, like uh, lick my the inside of my mouth. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Who likes to, and um, you know it's it's a, it's a it's a mix between a golden retriever and a poodle, right? Ah, medium yeah. sized dog, mm -hmm. well, very uh, humanly. I mean, like very into humans. Yeah, humans. I have no idea what people listening to our conversation will think when you say that. But keep going because I'm going to go somewhere that I think uh, you're actually going to go to. But let's see. But anyway. You know, I mean, uh, and then I have this overall view that, you know, all creatures and plants have been made. Maybe we don't know, like a bed bug, right? We don't know why, what its ecological reason is, but it's got a reason. So when, when my dog, when this dog comes and licks me, wants to, and out of his instinct, and he's so determined to like what to do it, I let him, right? So as time mm. goes on, it's fine, you know, you know I, because, right? But now let me go to the the, the, the gist I want to get, get to you. Mm. He, you know, we have I think much later after the first village, right, adopted a practice of giving is different from getting, and giving can never be as good as uh, taste, uh, you know, satisfying as uh, getting. <laughs> that give. Opposite... Oh, that is such bullshit. But I understand that that's the tradition. Yes, go ahead. Uh, okay, but you know, for for the dog, it, it doesn't it doesn't occur to them. You know, that's the yeah, dog you're right. Essentially, it, 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 it's very happy. Number one, yeah. and it's happy more time. Much of its happiness comes from it giving. It's like yeah. instinctively. I mean, I it's, would argue that the dog doesn't even make that distinction. Yeah, that's it. That's it. It never makes it, that it, distinction. It, it understands receiving, mm. so to speak. Perhaps it yep. differentiates that. I'm not sure. But its body mm. understands the difference between he's holding a chunk of meat and he isn't. Mm. Right? Body understands mm. that. 
But the thing about the dog, okay, look, it's doing something crazy. And, mm. you know, this isn't to suggest that everyone should French kiss their dogs. Though, you know, for those of you for whom it's natural, by all means. Mm. <laughs> I mean, let them, you know, let them lick your mouth. Uh, mm. I think many in the West would consider that disgusting or dangerous or unhealthy because the dog has a lot of germs, so to speak. Mm. But here's the actual thing that's crazy. I will argue mm. something really bizarre here, and I'll take responsibility for my argument. I will argue that your dog is already... Okay. Your dog has senses that sense your mind. Yeah. The same way you yeah. can smell the dog, the dog can smell your mind. Right? Yeah. It has senses that can yeah. sense your mind. It has senses that can participate with your mind. It has senses mm. that are telepathic. It has senses mm. with which it can bond its intelligence to yours and give something truly astonishingly miraculous to you. That, that dogs give to humans all the time and the humans don't recognize it at all. They don't even notice it. They just feel better when the dog's around. They can't see what the dog's actually doing. And I'm going to argue that what most of the dogs are actually doing is they're trying to, they're trying to do something like the Vulcan mind meld in Star Trek, mm -hmm. where Spock becomes, you know, they, the two minds become one mind. It's trying to do something like that. And it's trying to do that for us, an array of heroic purposes. And one of the best things it could possibly do, if that were its goal, would be to get its microbiota into your gut microbiome and your microbiota into its. Once you start sharing mm. the digestive microbiota, especially the first, you know, <laughs> sort of landing zone for microbiota in humans, one of them anyways, the mouth. Yeah. So, you know, when dogs are sniffing poop and doing whatever they're doing, presuming they do such things, they're connoisseurs of bacteria. It's obvious to me from observing them. So I would argue that the dog is actually trying to become one fit more one organism with you so that its microbiota get into your mouth and your microbiota get into its mouth, and some on both sides survive. And they reproduce, yeah. and they become families of trillions of organisms. Trillions. <laughs> like, there's you, 43 you know, trillion bacteria inside a human body. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and once again, be... right, you have the same thing. You have unity and diversity. The mm. diversity supports cool. the health of the unity. Yep. And Especially, you know, Darren, uh, on this part, right? Especially if you say, look, what is the reality when people talk about unity and uh, uh, diversity in, 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 in today's governance world? They, when they talk about unity, they're talking about conformity, isn't it? Conformity just absolutely cannot be the, the basis for unity. No, this is why, yeah, this is why if you're putting a cohort together, Mm. you don't want to have to give them rules mm. you want them to discover the process together so that it's organic yep. i think but in a dire situation where there's something interfering with them discovering it together the catalyst should mm. should declare the principles wow yes the catalyst uh, should communicate the mm. principles to us and what I was going to say is yep. that a long time ago, okay, look, let me just say something really simple and stupid. Mm. By the time a human collective needs rules, 70% mm. of that collective has gone missing in action for one reason or another, and it's offline. Yep, yep. By the time you have to tell people what to do, the mm. intimacy is not there. Yep. There's no intimacy um... between them. They can't sense each right. other. They're not, they're not sensing each other and doing predictive analysis for each other's needs and vulnerabilities and things like that, which humans in a tightly knit group do that all day long, every day. Right? They just naturally do that. They're vigilant right, right. in a way. They're vigilant of everything as if they were the unity 
as if the concerns of the unity, I don't know, it's really hard to say it in language because it sounds like a rule and it's a game. It's not a rule. Mm. But once you make it a rule, eh, you're going to have a tough time. Like by the time God had to write stuff in stone on top of some mountain and send Moses down to his people with, with what, 10 (laughs) rules? You got to imagine like things must have been really bad for something that severe to have to happen. You got to tell people don't kill each other. You got to tell them not to steal. (laughs) Right. You got to tell them to wear a loincloth. Right. Or, you know what? Don't rub your butt on your food. (laughs) By the time you have to tell them these things, something's gone horribly haywire. Like not my, not in a little way, in like a, an yeah. apocalyptically bad way. It can only go from here to disaster, kind of way. And and um, text, I mean, writing it down. Overall, I mean, in a in a large in a large way, has um taking us backwards hasn't it especially hell yes i mean uh, as with any technology good and bad and also um unfortunately for for humans pretty much unavoidable given the situations unavoidable um but yeah once okay look the problem with text is you have okay if i am speaking with you or you are speaking with me right yeah We both have an idea of to whom we are speaking Mm. and also to whom we are listening. Once you have text, you have the possibility, which is very dangerous for human cognition, the way human cognition, psychologically, it's anatomy, very, very dangerous. If you have a thing, which is this speech without someone speaking it to you. Ah, yep. Now you can't tell whether that's an actual person, mm-hmm. whether it's a machine, yep. whether it's God, or whether mm. it's a problem in your consciousness. And since you can't tell which one of these it is, things go badly. Once mm. you have disembodied speakers, yep. things go badly for humans. Generally, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's also a sign yeah. that things have already gotten weird, right? Mm. But I mean, I'm... when I think about getting humans together for each other, and this is perhaps the most exciting thought I'm capable of having, I have to admit it, uh, it seems almost impossible or wildly unlikely to my pragmatic you know, mind, my pragmatic thoughts. How, you know, how do you, how do you, what do you tell them? What do you want them to do? What's so exciting Mm -hmm. that, you know, we're going to get together and actually go on an, 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 on a mission, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I have various answers to those questions, but it sure seems just as we were talking, as we were speaking about earlier in the conversation, it seems to be a zero 100 problem. It isn't. Mm, It isn't isn't a zero 100 problem. But it seems that way until and, you get a few experiences of making it work, right? Mm. And you can make it work for an hour. You don't have to make it work for, for, for the future or the world. You can make it work for two hours for five people. Now they will get a taste. You will get a taste. Both of you will realize, oh, sh- oh shit, we can do this. We can actually do this together. Because I would argue... <laughs> And I know this is a very dangerous thing to say, but I'm quite certain of the truth of it. I would argue that a team of five people could transform a nation in 90 days. Any nation. Probably almost any five people. And if this was ever true in human history, it's more true now than it's ever been. Because the history and future of life on Earth depends on the doing like the humans becoming Please intelligent. Yeah. They must, the humans must become intelligent or either that or you have to kill off like 97% of them or something, right? If you want to keep the world alive, because they'll just keep making machines. 
Now, I'm not arguing to, to kill anybody, to be clear. I'm saying yep. if you want to preserve life on Earth, we either have to, be, like, the entire history, the meaning of the history of life on this world and the future mm. of those histories, we have got to get the humans playing a game that isn't lethal mm. together, right? It's the fundamental priority. It's more important than any other thing I can think of if we care about, will there be a world for our grandchildren? If we don't mm. care about that, it's still really important. <laughs> mm. But so, so then, then you have the problem of, in this case, in the little um, toy you know, universe that I'm creating here in our discussion, Yep. In this case, what you do is you get five people together and you teach them how to solve an intractable problem locally to where they live. Mm. Right? So that they'd have the experience of taking on a problem that just can't be fucking solved, synergizing, mm. you know, solving the problem. Now they'd have experience. This was, this topic was related to our agreement to come, to listen, to talk together today. Because we were talking about teams. I was talking about teams, and that's when you sent me uh, a message on Facebook, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes, correct. Yes, correct. So there's then, something about collaboration. In collaboration. How, how, how can we make it, make what you, what you are trusting, and which is what I'm trusting too, in, in your messages, yeah? In, in God, I you love that word. Saying, you know, okay. You know, that's an alternative. And, um, and you put it in such a way that a lot of the usual suspects cannot even object to it because it's, right. it's, 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 it's beyond. Um, also, look, it's, it's so I don't care. So I want authentic. to be really clear. Yes, I don't care about the usual sus suspects objecting because here's what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> once you get humans being actually human together, and the public is able to observe that happening mm. and see the results and see what it's like to be, to have the scope of our humanity, some portion of that return to us relationally, yep. behaviorally, in terms mm. of our role and our felt sense of role. If you can give humans some of that back, yep. those objectors are going to last about six days and then they're going to be on, they're going to be forming their own teams. Nobody will want to be left out. No idiot is dumb enough that when they see the mm. humans making that nectar of being human together, they're going to be like, yeah, I don't want any part of that. <laughs> you know? mm. That's the original, yep, yep. that's the original money, right? That's mm -hmm. what money's a representation of is that nectar. Yeah. That's right. That's right. It's that's the right. synergistic and, and... nectar. Yeah. Mm. And then the humans can learn things like this. You can teach children this and you're like, look, you know, your parents are doing this thing with money, right? And what mm -hmm. they're really trying to get is this other stuff that you and your friends make naturally when you play together. <laughs> they're not getting any of that. <laughs> so they're trying really hard to get money. <laughs> you don't have to do that. The thing that you and your friends are doing can develop, can grow, and can be mm. maintained and, and also can... Like you can get five people together and then five of them split apart, two of those form new ones, the other three join existing ones, right? So that there's sort of cross-pollination between team and pod groups. And this is something that works really, really well. The game that I'm talking about is the game that every organism in nature is playing. And the humans are made to play this game, but they're playing sort of the opposite of it which is kill the unity and make representations of the dead things and then sell them to each other. <laughs> so if you give them a game that's authentic to play and they like it, it's going to become really contagious. If you give actual humans something to do that's amazing and the other people see, you'll mm. have objectors at first, but it's not going to last long. Hmm. Hey, Darren, Darren, say that again. You know, I want to process that some more. 
say the, the last two sentences again. Okay, the goal um, is to do something so momentous and beautiful that nobody can stand to be left out. Yes, nobody. Yes. Everybody wants that, in. That's full on. I, I can sense that because. And that's an achievable that. thing. In a way, just you and I speaking of such matters is the beginning of that. Hmm. Can you see why I say that, Bala? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And yeah. and I know hundred percent. You know, in, in, uh, and I have have been there in my background, right? These people who are labeled as poor and whatever in these zero crime villages, but these kids are so rich. I mean, yes, you know, yes. They, they're alive, you know. Yes, <laughs> and to they're be human. Help. <laughs> yeah, if you are, if you if you get excited, you know, cockroach up being upside down. I mean, whatever. It's a, toys can come from with what the rest of the world might call nothing, but they're excited, right? Because, like you were saying, right, you know, um, they, walking is impossible, running is impossible, jumping is impossible, but they, 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 they're not overwhelmed by all of the text, you know, around the world, I suppose. Right, the, the yes, and world. also, I'm. I mean, I'm guessing. Is do the children have phones? No, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, this is like an alien comes to Earth and go, and and you know finds your village and looks and says, "This is a very unusual village here." Uh, where are your children's phones? And you say. They don't have any, and the alien says, "Oh, I'd like to raise my children here. Do you think it would be okay?" <laughs> <laughs> can I? Can can we do this together? Because, wow, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it's almost like it's almost like asking, um, "Do your children wear a mechanical parasite that destroys their attention, motivation, awareness?" Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not the only thing the phones do, but whew, it's a lot of what they do. You remind me, Darren, you remind me, you know, like I, I, I'll be going back there again in a couple of months to back to the village scene, yeah? Um, mm -hmm. And I'll be permanently based there very soon. I'm just organizing to do that, yeah? Mm. Time some things with the, with the urban world. Okay. What was beautiful uh, every time I'm there, right? Um, the kids automatically want to help the mother. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, like, yeah. I mean, you know, it's very, it was very common, right? To think, you know, it was very common me growing up, my sisters would help the mother and I would help the father and then stuff like that, right? Uh. There's no, I mean, they didn't have to do too much, but. Uh, but now, I mean, of late, you know, my kids and, and um, to some extent, but just generally, I, I noticed that it's they're finding it in very people are finding it very hard to get their kids to do chores. Yeah. Oh. Um, but when I go to the village, the kids seem to like, wow, I'm given a chance to be an adult. And yes. They seem to find yes. amusement, excitement in like, wow, they're treating me like an adult now. You know, yes. completely saying I can't do this and I can't do that and stuff. And yes. um, so, because my um, brother-in-law's, uh, uh, my I'm sorry, my uh, yeah, my brother-in-law's children, yeah, my, um, essentially, essentially, yeah, my nephews, like right, and, and nieces, mm. bring breakfast. I'm upstairs and they're downstairs and they're bringing coffee and this and this this like eight years old. She mm -hmm. she does a good job, like mm -hmm. um, bad. I'm so happy with that. And mm -hmm. you know, her mother or my wife doesn't have to um, push her. It just she looks forward to doing this, right? It's like yeah, okay. What you'll find is like in our culture, the children are competing to get things. They want to get things. Um, in the village culture. The children are competing to, it's not merely give. Um, mm. They are competing to participate meaningfully 
with the family, the village, the planet, and the adults, and the yeah. children. Yeah. Whatever. They can participate meaningfully. And so the chance to bring coffee is better than just yeah. sitting there looking at my thumb. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and they don't have a smartphone to defect into, so they can't def they're not going to defect that way. So, you know, I could be doing any other thing, but the chance to bring coffee is meaningful. I'm serving my ancestors. They are still alive today with me in the same room, right? This is magic. Right? We are and, still alive uh, together. Yeah. And then maybe we could add, uh, in, in, if it's just this, like a rite of passage, as in, right? Mm. You know, one of the things all want to be is like, they don't want to be treated like kids, like who know nothing, you know? There's, mm -hmm. there's that add often right uh, uh, mm -hmm. thrown in, right? i mean some Even of that works in their favor because some of the children respond to that by becoming monumentally intelligent yeah correct, correct. right because yeah. they're like that dumb kid you know my dad called me dumb so i learned quantum <laughs> physics right you know or, or i'm you know i'm just giving a ridiculous example but yeah, yeah. yeah some of it does sort of help the children uh, but it should that shouldn't be the the cultural you know uh, mm -hmm. but that shouldn't be the but, cultural but, tradition. I'm listening. I, so so wait, wait Darren, I want to um, imprint this into my head, right? Which is yes. first number one that, that there's an issue, there's a big problem of getting kids to like um, do the sensible things, right? So sure, and one of the reasons why they don't want to do this, and what you're saying is, okay, they are lost. They think they want to get things, and a subset yeah, they of want that to is, also okay. They want to either get things or they want to defect, and they're addicted to electronic stimuli and things like that, mm -hmm. right? So they're used to constantly referring to an object with their attention. The children there yeah. don't have if to do that. Phone. If you have, yeah, if they have phone. a phone. Even if they have a computer, if they have a phone, if they have a video game, if they have a television, mm. you know, yeah. if, if they have even a radio, it mm. starts to be the same kind of thing. And also because we've totally, you know. But okay, totally I have to say. I'm sorry. I have to say. The thing and all those things are replacing is meaningful relation in the village with the others. Mm. All those things, they are replacing that. They are the money version of the nectar that's produced naturally when the mm. people are there for each other. Yep. This great it, sweetness. It, no. mm. And, you know, com combination of silence, laying hopscotch on, in front of a uh, the hall, seeing the kids from the uh, neighbor's house coming, not wearing something different. All of that is um, little sparkles, you know, right? Mm -hmm. And that talking, you know, learning how to It is because bit you and the children are there together for each other, even the children mm. who aren't yours. And, you know, yeah. the children, they like, I mean... I don't know how to put it. Um, the children are carrying assets mm. that the adults don't recognize and dispose wow. of and punish the children for carrying everywhere around here, mostly. A little bit of, you know, there are a few intelligent parents that know better. Um, mm. But the children are bringing something to the table. And the adults pretend, mm. since you eat our food, you are dependent on us. And since we have to protect you, you are dependent on us. And this creates a kind of slavery. Right? Mm -hmm. the children in the West are sort of conceived of as slaves. Um, this is why we send them to school, which is basically a slave-making process. Uh, mm -hmm. This is why you know they go to university and get degrees and so forth to function in the representational layer of human culture and society, which is, you know, mostly pretty bad. Um, mostly different kinds of slavery. The children are meant for something else and they can tell the adults are suffering and they have assets that will ease the suffering of the adults if they don't eradicate it. The children are carrying something like medicine. 
Mm. Children are living medicine. The adults are living medicine, especially when they are together for each other. Then they naturally make the medicine together. Does it make sense? Yes, yes, yes. yes. In this case, it medicine isn't like a pharmaceutical. Medicine is... <laughs> Medicine is mm -hmm. the food and drink of our soul or our heart. Mm -hmm. right? yep. Medicine Listening is what, is yeah. Being open, what you know, resources. learning. You know, being ready to learn, you know, as opposed to taking for granted that um, take the, 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 the representational layer um, sends the wrong signals, you know. It does. It completely it messes up our thought. Don't want to mistake. Denial. Go on. Go on. Sorry, Darren. No, no, please. I'm sorry. Please continue. I, yeah. No, you, you, you know, you often I'm not able to, it's kind of like often I'm not able to articulate it, but I, I, I understand, um, um, you know. The he, okay, the moderns are captured by a layer mm. of processes that they enact as behaviors, like drive the car to the grocery store, get the groceries, right? Mm. Go to the job, get the pay, take the kid to the doctor, pay the attorney, do the taxes, watch the television yep. show, um, mind the smartphone, uh, mm. you know, clean the house, right? chores, what, what, what we would call chores. But really mm. those are like, um, those are all, all those processes are mostly vampiric. They're extractive. They take something from us and they give us a representation. Now we can negotiate that layer very carefully if we're smart so that we get actually nourishing food when we go to the grocery store and we don't get poison, for example, candy bars and whatever. Um, yep. But the representational layer is powerful. It's well established. It affects everything on Earth. It's mm. lethal. It steals life. It, you know, it. It's an actual vampire would be terrified if it saw the representational layers <laughs> relationship with humans, because it would it would realize that that must be its god. That must be the god mm. of the vamp. That's what spawns vampires. Vampires come from that, you know, if there are such things. <laughs> but yes, the medicine that the village makes together, this medicine is very powerful and it has a unique protective effect. Vampires bounce off of it. <laughs> it makes like a yeah. shield, right? And so vampirism doesn't get established in the children or the adults. Mm. And they're busy playing every other beautiful game. Everybody will yep. be happy even when things are difficult. They're still going to be way yeah. happier. Yeah. Mm. Everyone hey, will be Darren. taking care of each other. I'm listening. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Darren, one way of like maybe peeling away the uh, representation lay of just exposing to people. I've tried that. I mean, to, 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 like, it works because I, it's, it's true. To me, it's true. Okay, I'll tell you this, right? Um, even the people there in the village and stuff, you know, in, in central Java, right? It was very famous, you know, spice trade Asia, emerging people were discovering things and all that stuff, right? From nothing, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. villages became better and better, right? As humanity went on, right? But all of that is kind of like blocked off by modern writing and books and even anthropology and stuff. They don't write about it that much. They, because, we, okay, but okay, this thing I want to tell you. Once hmm. I'm the village, I realize, you know what? These people are the richest people on planet Earth, with, even though they have very little currency. Sorry, they have a lot of cu currency, but very little money. Yeah? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? Right? Yeah, Anybody because money, know, money uh, eats... Money eats the spirit of relation between humans. Mm. It does. It right. destroys that shit. It just eats. It's like pouring acid there mm. to get rid of it because now yeah. there's a single standard to rule all things. Like uh, the terror in the fantasy story, The Lord of the Rings, one ring to rule them all, is that 
the ring that rules the seven elvish magic rings that keep the world alive, the ring that rules them is malignant. And mm. that's money. The one yeah. ring that rules them all in Tolkien's language, <laughs> mm. cash is the best metaphor for it around here. Yeah. Um, it's hard to say it it's hard to say that it isn't objectively evil mm. because its effect yeah. on the humans okay look i could show you so many features of this ah oh, god all right um i used to feed some blue jays mm -hmm. uh, i met these met these blue jays i'd bring them peanuts i had took great joy in feeding them yeah and the male would come to my hand. Um, he'd land on my hand, uh, take a peanut. A female wouldn't. Okay. Uh, for important reasons. Um, one day the female got angry with me and I didn't really understand why. But what I had noticed was this. The blue jay couple forms a vigilance pair. The girl stays up high. The boy mm -hmm. can go down an adventure. Only when the boy is up high, does the girl come down. Oh, shit. I just realized that. Fuck. Okay. <laughs> so I was interfering in that. And it would have been okay if I'd interfered in it once or twice mm -hmm. a day. But it's not okay if I interfere with it for two hours. And the reason it's not okay is that they live in the terrain of a pair of Cooper's hawks. And those hawks hunt blue jays. Oh, all right. So here's what I'm doing. I'm giving him the effect. Of, okay. Here's why I'm telling the story. Yeah, yeah. If you put something in front of people or animals mm. that's so compelling that it not only changes their behavior, it changes what they can be. Mm. Right. It drags what they can be down to fewer much more explicit things. Mm. All decisions become binary. Identity becomes binary. When I was throwing those peanuts on the ground for the, the girl bird, because she wouldn't come to my hand, she was having to go to the ground without radar above her because the male was off stashing the peanut I'd just given him. Mm. I wasn't okay. paying attention to their vigilance necessities. And I was providing them with a stimulus that was so compelling that they would break their culture break. of mutual support, right? That's they would it. break so that culture. Time. Yeah. Mm. It's so compelling that their bodies, it's like putting meat in front of a dog, right? Yeah. The body and is going to respond. You mm. know, if, if you, if you watch, you know, just put like a stack of hundred dollar bills tied up with a rubber band and put it on a street and watch the humans. Like it will drag their behavior down to, you know, the <laughs> most likely. Yeah. The, the violence. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It captures the nervous system. Can you see that? It's an, it's a representation that's powerful enough to completely capture the nervous system of an animal. And for the Blue Jays, that's peanuts. And for the humans, that's cash. Or these days, crypto. Mm -hmm. yep. mm. And overall, it's because, I mean, if there, if there were enough of what, what I'm saying, like the zero crime uh, villages, right? Mm -hmm. uh, meaning there's- Why do these, people... okay. I have to ask you. I'm oh, so, oh, sorry, go ahead. If yeah. there were enough of the zero crime villages. Okay. If there's enough of that and people go and live inside there, like say my, my wife comes from Indonesia to here, despite all the amount of um, money, you know, quite a lot of immigrants who come here, work here, want to stay in Malaysia. You know, they, they come from around the region, much poorer places, maybe like Nepal or uh, um, used to be Thailand, Sri Lanka, country mm. up, Burma, countries that have got constant political problems and stuff. So, so um, the, the, the people uh, you know, really have a tough time finding a job and stuff like that. They want to, they, when they come here, many of them, they want to stay here because you know, life is better for them here, right? But 
Mm-hmm. This Indonesian Java, when they come here, they want they want to go back. Why do they want to go back? The, they, they see their village as the safety, the security of the village as like a the the nest is too cozy for them want to want uh, to trust anything else. They want to go back, go to the nest. So what I'm saying is, and so it's essentially... Oh, I see. Wait. Um, their way of life is so familiar that the new way of life, even though it's amazing, they want they go back to the old one anyway. Is this what you mean? Yes. Or do you mean, is and that it? It's not just okay. old. You know, it's not just old. At least one thing is add to the old. Old plus, I won't be sent into an old folks' home. Oh, uh-huh. Right. They, they, they right. just can't, whatever money, you know, whatever comfort you may give to them in an old folks' home, they don't want it. They want to be, you know, poor with their kids, or their grandkids. So uh-huh. They, they want to be cared, they want to care and be cared for by family members who know their idiosyncrasies. Not some institutionalized. <laughs> okay, that was brilliant. <laughs> yes, that's very, very true. I would, I would almost go so far as to say that for most of us, that is a implicit feature of our human experience. Is that as we get older, most of us soften, and we become mm. vulnerable. Yes. And it's uh, loneliness is much more difficult to bear yep. than it was when we were younger. And we may be infirm and have illnesses and we may need help with certain things so that, it, you know, if I'm in a house where there's children around, I feel relatively safe. If there's something I can't yep. handle, they can take care of it, mm. you know, or my, yep. you know, or my brothers and sisters or, you know, the fa- there's family, and if there's not family, there's the neighbors, and they are family. Mm-hmm. Yep. The humans naturally do this. They family up unless mm. something gets in between them first. And one of the yep. main things that gets in between them, at least where I live, is money. The fact yep. that you guys <laughs> don't have that. See, in the village the lack of the importance of money is almost like saying we get water that isn't, we get relational water that hasn't been pre-poisoned. Mm. You see? Yep. It's the same yes, thing you yes. said earlier. You said, I, I am, <laughs> what did you say? I'm, I'm in, <laughs> I, uh, I'm inclined to unconditional love or ah. something like this. Right. And I said, no, yeah. you just never defected. Right. The That's villagers it. don't, they don't defect. There's nothing that would motivate them to defect. A big stack of money, they might just laugh at it and say, like, no. Yeah. Hmm. You know, I mean, they, they, if you, you're right. You know, to, to add to what you're saying there, you know, like they helicopter, they, they kind of like bail out of their, uh, of their village for a while to get some money so they can for, for build a house. Yeah. And mm-hmm. Five mm-hmm. Fields, yeah? Once they get that minimum amount, they're back and they're not, they don't want to be uh, in the town anymore. They want to be back in the village. Uh, (laughs) That's hilarious. Do you see how much more intelligent that is than what we do? Like, (laughs) in a situation like that, your humanity has a shot at surviving. And so do the relationships that most matter in your heart. In the other place where they just go to the village and they stay there? Mm. I mean, they go to the town, you know, they go where, to get the mm. money and then they just stay there. Um, they continue to stay there because yeah. they, they bought extra houses. They, and they they're dying the inside. Yeah, they're dying. And as if they're going to live after they die. I mean, they're not going to die. Yeah. Or they, they, they must... Um, leave so much wealth to the next generation, things will be better. No, the creator, everybody is doing it, um, crime, culture, mm-hmm. you know, despite prosperity. What we yeah, it's funny do. because the I think it's really important when I hear you speak, you say, we have a zero crime village. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> I'm not sure that 
a lot of people even know that such things exist at all mm. in yeah. the world. A lot of people, um, lot of people obviously, don't. yeah, no, mm. most people would be like, what does that even mean? Although mm -hmm. the statement makes it real, you know, the language makes it relatively clear what it means. There's no crime in here. Mm. <laughs> but, <Yeah. laughs> and by the way, if there's no crime, like you probably don't, <laughs> You don't really need cops. You might need a fire department. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you don't need That's cops it. and you don't need cops weapons. You don't, have, you don't need lawyers. You don't you need know? guns. You, yeah, you don't need an anti corruption body. Yeah. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, you, you don't need courts. And, you don't need prisons. And all of the political correctness. Yeah, all, all of the, <laughs> ugly, just, the most ugliest things is like, Polit you know, cosmeticized dirt, you know, like it's really dirty, but you put lots of makeup and you stop anybody saying the truth about it. Man. Yes, ah, you know. <laughs> like, yes all these you things know. are, I mean, <laughs> I usually don't think in religious terms, but when I see the festering malignance of the prisons mm -hmm. and the courts and the cops and the armies and the military and so forth, it's hard for me not to think that they're demons. They do <laughs> what what I, they do what actual demons would actually do. So it doesn't really matter whether their origin is metaphysical or not. They're the same damn thing. Now look, here where we live in the West in America, the institutions that um, that underlie our social agreements mm -hmm. our governments um which is a big mess of a million little branches uh our police the military the fire department um mm -hmm. the hospitals mm -hmm. the schools right yeah those it's, things you know, yeah some of them are decent we couldn't uh, sure. get along without cops because shit would just turn into the wild, wild west, we think. So we, we have to have cops. And yep. sometimes the cops are an absolute nightmare and sometimes they save your life. They sort of have mm -hmm. both, you know, both valences. The fire department almost always just does good. You know, they just put out fires. Okay. It's not of of all the single jobs you could pick, that one seems pretty virtuous. The hospital's kind of similar. The schools, uh, the schools start to get sketchy because it's about slave making and stuff. But mm. you think universities are worse than the school? In in in, in, in your uh, the intensity of the blight, right? The intensity of mm. the disease in the university is similar to grade schools and high school. It's just um, more sophisticated and highly complex, right? There's, mm. okay, here, let's just call this the malware in the education system, right? It's in every, mm. it's in every, uh, what, step? It's in every step of the system. So the malware okay. is in the whole staircase. But the way the malware works up near the top of the staircase in the universities is different. And there's, you know, 15 new kinds as of last year. That stuff is mutating, right? As fast as you could try to eradicate it, it's, it's, in, it, it's um, emerging in new forms as you watch it, right? Okay. It's very... Um, it's highly resistant to technical intervention. Um, mm. Its primary yep. vulnerability is relational intervention. Change the relationships, the malware can't function. Hey, Darren, would, would, would the US have less of a problem, less of a problem, malignancy problem, if it wasn't such a lot, if, if, if it was, um, Say five separate countries. Hmm. Not necessary. It's interesting. Okay, the honest answer is, of course, we don't know. Um, okay. The the simple Why the I simple wait. Like, let me finish. The simple correct answer is, 
any attempt at, at responding would obviously just be my opinion. Um, whereas some of the things that I'm talking about are not merely my opinion. These are, in a sense, obvious features of our situation. But um, I think uh, that solution or that transformation would change a lot of things. We've never really experienced anything much resembling it. I don't have any data. And it's not like we're just asking in a vacuum. We're asking in the time and context in which we live. So we're asking like, if the US split into five bodies in 2024, you know, mm. you think that would, what, what effect do you think that would have on malware and education? Um, one feature of the setup that I like is if you've got five Petri dishes in which to attempt to <laughs> spawn something mm. more intelligent than our educational system, Mm -hmm. you'd have five shots at it instead of one mm -hmm. but one you can actually have as many shots as you want because the fact that you know and i mean anybody who wants to is free to start some kind of new educational system most people aren't that bold mm -hmm. and there have been attempts you know in the states we have waldorf schools for example uh, which are wildly different from standard educational system. Mm -hmm. you, you, you don't hear much talked about, about what happens to Waldorf students. I mean, like, for example, as a cohort, are they mm -hmm. better citizens than the others? You know, because... Right, you, no, you I think... don't know what the data is on that. Um, what is that? Rudolf Steiner's game, I think it was. Um... Yeah, Rudolf Stein as well. Yeah. I one of my girlfriends had been raised in a Waldorf school and I'd known a couple of other people who were. Uh, yeah. and even when I was young, some of the same ideas were used to build a school that had one classroom for all the ages. So like a centralized, like you know, unity, right? We'll, we'll keep all the ages together, they can learn together help each other instead of se yes. segmenting them right mm -hmm. didn't go very well for who knows 10 yeah. reasons to sunday but mm. but yeah i don't know hey, it's unclear Darren, did, it, did it not go well because the the malignancy spread across so many aspects yes of look look um <laughs> You know, I can imagine a science fiction story where we go to um, we pick 70 billionaires mm. and we go to them and, and we tell them we will educate your children. We will give your children an educational experience that they will always be excited about and they will outperform anything you can buy from anyone else mm -hmm. <laughs> and so you build the system experimentally that way you learn how to do that right that way mm -hmm. and then you just attack the whole fucking school system from there <laughs> with the same with whatever you can produce from that breeder reactor right of mm -hmm. how do we actually get children meaningful human experience and at the same time deep uh representational intelligence and one of the best ways to do that is just to teach them the structure of representational cognition once they see that they will never bow to it they'll manipulate it mm -hmm. from above just like humans should always do it's okay if we have representations we have to manipulate them from above we have to not be mm. manipulated. We have to not be puppeted by our own representations. Does that make sense? Yep. No. All the sense. Yep. Yeah. yeah. No, and you can teach this. This is teachable stuff, right? This is stuff we could discover. There's features of language and um, modern thought. There's features, simple semantic and linguistic and philosophic features that you could teach to children and adults that would mostly free them 
at least in their minds, from, I don't know, 68% of the traps they're going to face in consciousness throughout their lifetime. <laughs> like, we're, we're walking around wearing like iron cages in our minds, us humans. So far, most of us. I am myself yes. included to the degree that I live in a city. I'm, I'm subject to the same <laughs> problem. I'm, I'm a, I'm a prisoner dreaming of a jailbreak <laughs> <laughs> where it sounds like for you, you know, where outside the jail is and you intend to get there right quick. Mm. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Good. Yep. Yeah. Mm. Is Benji with wow. you? Say that again. Uh, that is Benji was, with yeah. you where you are? Yeah, I mean, um, I thought right, I heard him not barking. Right oh, not right now. Oh. No, not right now. Earlier he ah. was. He was insisting being here before ah. I started talking to him. Ah, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I heard him. Um, okay, okay, possibly. Yeah, he's, he's quite a character. Once to be, you know. But you know, he's a savior. He's uh, saved my sanity, you know. So um, and has me mm. uh, need to really much better understand um, the, the village scene, you know. Like, because you get lost. One of the things is um, me too. Like, I wanted to achieve. You know, you've got this right. So, and if all kinds of people, like not just. Everybody, like 10 out of 10, 100 out of 100, 1,000 out of 1,000 people only know achievement by, hey, how much wealth do you have? By, yes. Oh, did you did, That's what did I said. Get a it's a, yeah, it's a sick standard that um, mm. turns everything to one thing. Mm. Right? So when you ask them, you know, when they determine your value as a person, mm. they want to know what property you own, who you're married to. You know, are mm. you um, are you well bred? Do you and come you from power? Bad. Do you come from money? Yeah, like for for example, you know, I got suspended by uh, LinkedIn, you know, mm. for being forthright, right? Um, because fellows were doing a con job in Singapore and stuff. So I, I was like, stop! I mean, just generally, it pisses me off. Like right? nobody, you know, speaks up against a, a blatant. Um, Con, yeah no? okay i agree i agree but let's let's um agree together that we will try to mm. discover how to do things that are effective yep right yes. so that Absolutely. even if we take on yeah. some kind of small mission together even the mission of this conversation because this you know this works then let's just have the some simple agreements i'm not trying to write these in stone but we will try to help each other see better and if action is required, we will try to find very effective ways to act. Yeah. Because LinkedIn is like um, putting a firecracker in the fire department. <laughs> mm. <laughs> like, like they're just waiting for someone to go sideways. It's the same with Facebook. Those, those are battlegrounds. That's enemy-owned terrain. Mm. Um. This is part of why I'm careful, mostly mm. careful on Facebook. It's funny, you know, a few days ago, I did something I never, ever do. Um, I posted some comments from a news source on a political issue. Okay. Uh, and it wasn't any rowdy, it wasn't any specifically radical statement. Mm. Um, over the next two weeks, that post got zero views. None. No one saw it. Oh, wow. Sh shadow ban. Yeah, not an accident. Mm. Right? I mean, it's so devious, isn't it? That was such a devious thing to do. And yet well, I'll tell you, Malala, mm. there's, we, could, <laughs> um, we could take that model and flip it over. Mm. That model... <laughs> Okay, that thing gives us a model of what not to do. Mm. If you have a really good model of what not to do, you can flip it over and no one will not want to be there. Mm. Like, I have a model of how to build a system on the internet that 
puts us back together, mm -hmm. keeps all our data and communications private. Okay. Helps us get smarter every time we make a move with a machine of any kind. Okay. Yep. And produces a social adventuring system so that people form teams to accomplish, you know, instead of putting a ball through a hoop, right? Mm. We accomplish something in the actual world of humans. Ah. Good. Uh, As a, you, 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 you've been uh, developing it? I have you a model. I can show you a model oh, of how we could do it. And also, okay, okay now here's the, here's the thing that's actually a little more compelling. Okay. The way that system works is a model of how we can play together without mm -hmm. machines. We don't need machines to do it. We naturally do it together. Mm -hmm. If most of the malware isn't running, we naturally do this together. I'm just trying to, to demonstrate that there's a way that we can take the electronic infrastructure of the internet and do something completely the opposite of what we're doing with it. Wow. And it would be, I mean, it would outcompete everything that currently exists. And it would, I mean, there's so many abilities you could have with it that we don't have. And look, I'm not a big fan of link the humans to machines. Mm -hmm. That's okay. not, that's not my, my favorite game plan by a long shot. The problem I have is that the humans are linked to machines. Mm. So if we want to capture some humans and give them a shot at liberty, or at least yep. discovering what that might mean, mm. we might need to capture their machines. Yes. Right? We might need the, those machines doing something different mm. than what they're doing, like something non-vampiric with the humans. Yep. Right? Yeah. These are just thoughts, but I do no, you're, you're I think right, very deeply right. about I these think. matters because I want I want the experience of being with other humans doing meaningful things. That's what I actually want. Uh, yep. Really. Same here, Darren. Darren you know. Um, say that much because I, I uh, I, I just, I, I kind of like, uh, when I said enough of these machines and all in the town, I just run away, but, you know, like, I just, yes. you know, bolt and go, because yes. I can't, like, I don't want to explain and be politically correct and use the language to, you know, to go, you know, to just go, yeah. Um, this, hey, I, but, but I hear you 100% on, um, you know, I've got to cut the I to have to do things more effectively than I, I, I have, right? Meaning um, you, you, you have to, in the transition, you have to get into the, the machines that they are attached to, to get them off the machines. Like for example, one after another. If all because, the kids are gonna have phones, we have to give those phone, we have to give those kids something on their phones that it doesn't eat them yeah. alive. Right. And, and to, 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 to to even you know get them to instruct them or I mean like to, to get them to work together to for on an offline activity and what mm -hmm. I what I have been in mind as I talk to you here is confederating and intense making a bit more intense right um, village life you know village and small town life in uh, Indonesia Darren right mm. a country of two million people right mm -hmm. one of the last bastions of reality you know. Um, I know, but if you, never... if you, the funny thing is, it's ironic, dude. If you, one of the questions that I had in our conversation for you that I haven't asked you yet is, do you want your village to have a, a voice? Yes. With which it speaks to the world? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay. So. so I thought perhaps this might be so. And what I'm trying to tell you is that's not impossible. Mm. But to protect the village, that voice might have to be anonymous. Sure, because all of that is good. If, okay, but if something, if, if the world realizes there's a zero crime village, mm. <laughs> that's not going to go well, dude. That will not go well. Right? Never, I mean, because they'll, they'll come over there and they'll, they think they can bust it, is it? 
ah, uh, there's 15 things that can go wrong with that. But mm. I did have the same idea early in our conversation. I thought to myself, wait, mm. there's a zero crime village. Holy cow. Like we need to get these people on the radio to the other villages. We need to link wow. the zero crime villages around the world. We need to, you know, mm. th these people need to have a voice. And then I thought, wait a minute, that sounds like setting up a sky beacon to 15 different kinds of vampires. Right? <laughs> just like, I can't wait to extract whatever nectar they're managing to produce over there and commodify that and bank the, bank the profit. You know? Except, you know, except that, you know what it is, a whole bunch of things has it like, it's not that easy. You know, I, I'll give you an, I'll give you a few examples, right? If you go to India, if you go to even Malaysia, right? Mm. Pretty much uh, all good sources of natural water, right, from the mountains, uh, has been taken over by a Nestle or a company like that. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I mean by vampires. It's straight up yeah. vampires, right? They go after the water. You know, I'm yeah, with you. I'm with you. Go ahead. They know how to do the TV advertising and the mm -hmm. search engine of all that stuff, right? Yeah, we'll give you candy bars. We'll give you some candy yeah. bars. You know, yeah. But in Indonesia, right, um, the politics is such that it's very hard to, it seems like, you know, um, many layers, you know, and, and, it's, it's, and it's, not, it's not mainstream. It's not organized so that you can say, ah, this is layer one, layer two, this is the, you know, exactly, and all that. It's just kind of like a bit all over the place. Um, mm, so okay. it's like very hard. meaning, for example, to get the mountain water, right, by, for Nestle, they have to get 18 different approvals, and those, there's, they, they're not in um, four or five camps. They're like all over the bloody place, you know? So right. you can't, people don't try, it seems like they try and give up, and it, it doesn't go anywhere, you know? So they go up ah. a few things, maybe like, um, national telephone maybe they, they can get somewhere but not anything that has got some too much of a regional uh, local footing like water from a river from a mountain whatever you, whoever it's, it's the people in the um in the villages nearby the, the people affected by that river have enough of a say and some, wow. somehow have enough of a stop it right that doesn't get there um so yeah you, you know um it's, uh, I can't explain exactly all why, but, but one big difference between Indonesia and quite a lot of the rest of the world. I mean, this just makes me think, Balal, I'm sorry to say this, but it just makes me think Nestle is right now talking to Bard about how to break that trap. Mm. Right. Nestle's going to straight up use AI and go like, OK, this trap has 19 parts. Can you solve for this? And the AI will be like, yeah, here's three solutions with a 70% chance of success. And here's 19 with a, you know, 58. Mm. Right. So that will not last. Mm. That mm. safety won't last. I mean, who okay. knows what's going to happen? The world is wildly unpredictable. <laughs> we could be, we could be living in, in a, from now on, it might just be like a storm of black swans events that we never predicted or thought of. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. There's certainly mm. much many more of those now than there than there ever were. Right, right. In, in our yeah, lifetime. But go ahead. It, yeah, somehow, you know, the, the you know the alternative you know the alternative, I mean like to me, like life in Malaysia has gone downhill. And when I sense the US it's gone downhill. You know, at a, at a very fundamental in I mean, give the individual um Enough soul, you know. Um, I mean, like, uh, why must why must there be like virtually no choice except to be to go into an old folks home? Why can't the family unit be together? I mean, what's yes, it, yes, it, it, because um, it's the difference between a modern culture and a traditional culture. And look, and, uh, in some in some nations. Mm. Um, there is still traditional culture. There's even some of it here in the United States where the children just naturally care for their parents and grandparents and so forth. Yep. But mostly it comes from other countries because 
for some reason during the origin of this nation that value was not emphasized uh -huh. right? it was much more about the privilege entitlement defection and addiction of the individual <laughs> mm -hmm. which you know like i said is basically just malware um, it, it's relational malware mm. or you know perhaps I mean, that's one useful way to think about it it's not the only way but yeah, yeah that I mean, tradition wasn't there, preserved if you go to japan it's there yeah. I don't know how much in, in various places in China it is. Uh, Russia is a bit more like the United States. Um, mm. France and England uh, more like the United States. But some other countries, the tradition is alive. And in most countries that didn't suffer um, eradicative colonization, that tradition, mm. you know, lives. It's naturally, mm -hmm. I think it's naturally human. It's not the only game mm -hmm. in town, but I think it's naturally human. Human. I mean, I mean, the problem in uh, modern countries is we want convenience and grandma and grandpa are wildly inconvenient. I'd rather defect by watching some comedy channel on TV than deal with, you know, whatever's going on with my ancestors. But it's a defection based you know, culture. Sorry, so go ahead. It's, it's, but there is other ramifications too, you know, like old folks, right? I think, yeah. Um, like the, the no, the old folks are like the children. I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. No, like the, the whole uh, 90, they, they say, like, for example, 90% of um, medical expenses or something of that sort, right? Uh, it's right. incurred in the last year of, of, of a person's life and stuff. And like, that's not, why not die a year, a year earlier? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, the, in, the main the reason you don't want to die a year earlier is because there's nothing has been fulfilling in your life. You've been living a life of just defecting from whatever you might have otherwise participated in. It's very safe, except, but it's extremely lonely and boring. Because, I mean, like... Um, you die in your village together with, with the other people, and so you, you you're not dragged um, onto onto a really hopeless um, medical system, you know, medical mm -hmm. system that mm -hmm. uh, and you're, uh, you know supposedly wants to uh, keep you alive, but usually but is actually like a, vampiric. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> That's right. Right. literally, it just sucks. It sucks the life out of you, and then it sucks the money out of your family for sucking the life out of you. It's like a double vampire. That's, I mean, if someone said, hey, would you want in on this game? We're going to suck the life out of this person. You're going to get that life. And we're going to suck the money out of their family. You're going to get the money. You want some? You know, a lot of people would sure say yes. <laughs> so, um, you know, and come on, with all the talent, you, and don't you think, you know, um, don't you think... Um, AI would be used to like um, bring make this explicit and clear. Hey guys, right? This is not really um, uh, this is a Faustian bargain. That's that's not a bargain. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, so although the problem is that the AIs are curated, and it would be just as much of a problem if they weren't. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, the yeah, humans yeah. have really invented something very, very dangerous here. And it's not without promise, mm. but as we know from looking historically at humans and technology, mm. that shit goes sideways right after the idealism is overcome by piracy. <laughs> hey, wait, Darren, you 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 have you you still taught me today, yeah. Um, yeah. Despite all the, 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 the negatives of the U.S. Um, medical insurance system and, and, and how it's wasteful and all that stuff, right? Uh -huh. Enough, you know, in, in, in the, let's say at the, at the public intellectual level, enough of us know that, hey, um, 
all said and done, Canada seems to be doing it a bit better and um, enough European countries. And okay, lead the Australia seems to be doing it better than the US. Exactly. There are uh, examples of, of countries that do it pretty well, we might imagine. Hmm. Okay. But that doesn't seem to be portable into the U.S. You can't, like, you can't look at a, a guy who gives an excuse, oh, we are the U.S. and that, 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 that. Okay, look. Why yeah, you I know, but you, what you don't... Okay, look, the problem here is that... Um, <laughs> and this is an ironic problem. We actually call this country the U.S. That is the word us. And that along oh, with many so. yeah right that along with many unfortunate features of our history mm -hmm. incline the citizens of the united states mm -hmm. to think in a way that is fundamentally black and white fundamentalistic you know it's fundamental in its fundamentalist in its understanding of us and them who are we uh, and who are they and most of the us's are fake, mm -hmm. right? The same way most of the them's are. But if mm -hmm. you identify with one of those fake us's, you inherit a bunch of them's. And this is a kind of an us and them economy that the U.S. Mm -hmm. is amazing at. It's like being amazing at filling your own organs with cancer or something relationally. It never, it will never work intelligently. Um, but this is a this is a fundamental problem with us. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it's bad. But, you know, despite despite the fact that I mean, your states and your municipalities have enough independence. For example, you know, yeah, they do. Go goes hill, but Miami goes up. Yeah, you know, like they can, but like, they generally <laughs> don't because the malware. The, the 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 influence of the malware is powerful mm. right um politics in the united states is a lot about uh <laughs> what various kinds of theft counterfeiting mm. value mm. um counterfeiting value more effectively than your opponent mm. um get the money and then a sort of um, complex backroom favor exchange among politicians. Mm. So it's it, like the structure of the system might be sound. We've never implemented that system. Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah, just a layer of pirate. It's like a, a multi-layer cake of seven kinds of piracy floating on top mm. of the structure as it stands as a legal or um you know sociological agreement system mm. mostly the structure doesn't get implemented <laughs> what gets implemented is piracy and vampirism <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well uh, into vivek ramaswamy you know uh, mm. was running for a while and when he articulates it, you can, you can sense that. For example, you know, um, he wanted to. He talks about getting rid of the um, uh, FBI, right? Uh, and how <laughs> Trump couldn't do it because Trump was essentially conned by the civil servants. That you can't. Um, uh, there, there are too many laws that stop you from firing uh, civil servants, right? But mm -hmm. uh, Trump, Swami was saying that. Um, that is the case when you're firing individual civil servants. But if you're having a mass uh, restructuring, you know, that the law allows you to do that. And with the Supreme Court as it's uh, stated, as it's uh, constituted, because it's got a, enough of a majority of Trump appointees or conservative, right? Mm -hmm. Who are really for, I mean, who see, see, who see the sense of, um, yeah, the, the, the the president has a right to um, restructure the FBI, you know, by executive order. By, I mean, this guy is... Yeah, or possibly be... even the Constitution. I mean, mm. you know, Trump is basically... Um, okay. Trump is, re is really dangerous, for, in my view, for two reasons. Uh, the first is that he has successfully circumvented regulation in the past. 
Mm -hmm. And the second is that he has, not only does he have no respect for regulation, he's a scoff law, right? And a scoff law will earn the vote of every male scoff law in the United States just for that one reason. And, and okay, the third thing that's dangerous about him is he has shown much smarter people what is possible. And what he has shown is possible is as follows. The United States as a nation can be captured by a single male human being. He's shown them that. He's basically shined a flashlight on a part of the game that nobody really believed was possible. He's doing the impossible. He's going from, he's going to go from zero to a hundred, right? He's going to have a go at the yep. impossible. And he's old enough that he probably doesn't give much of a shit if he fails. He's got nothing to lose, right? It's mm. all, anything he gets done is gravy, right? Mm. Like if he did, it can do anything, that works. So yeah, this is uh, this is dangerous shit. He's shown others who are much more intelligent than him, that the prize can be had. You can take the virgin home with you, for sure, right? You can have her whole family, you know? <laughs> that whole thing, you can just grab that whole damn thing in one fell swoop, right? And here's how you do it. You start with these moves over here, you place some judges on the Supreme Court, bing, bang, boom, casino payoff, right? That's really dangerous. He's shown others that it can be done. I mean, he's relatively stupid in my view, or at least he plays that face really well. But man, what a fucking dangerous idiot. Oh my God. Whew. But hey, Darren, when you had Hillary, you know, running against um, Hillary Clinton, running mm -hmm. against um, Trump, right? didn't it occur to you that my God, the U.S. has failed. If, if these people are running for president, I mean, like <laughs> that's brilliantly said. But yeah, no, that that occurred I mean, to me. Some how did the election happen? Okay, I'm pretty sure that that occurred to me when I was six, and I watched John F. Kennedy being executed in Texas over and over again on TV, and you know, juxtaposed with some of his speeches. Um. Mm. No, that, that dream died in me a long, long time ago, my friend. I mean, I was born the month after Kennedy was executed, and I've seen that guy speak. I've never mm. seen anything in politics resembling the appearance of true human virtue that I saw wow. in him. I, I note that it's the appearance I'm not saying the guy was a saint. I'm saying yep, sure. in a room full of demons, he stood out brightly. Okay. Uh, and there, mm -hmm. that happened only a couple times during my lifetime. You know, um, Carter might not have been a great president, but he wasn't evil. <laughs> Just... <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, like, so to me, like, um, if you can allow a contest like that, well, what is it? you fail, and what 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 else can you expect of a of a failed system? Apparently, I think most Americans expect that the failure of the United States has mm -hmm. to end with a bunch of bloodshed and violence, preferably as much as possible, maybe even apocalypse level, right? If we're going to go out, we're not going <laughs> to. We're not going to switch to a new system. We're going to take the planet with us, just like any insane <laughs> psychopath, you know, would do. Right? We're not going to. We're not going to try a new way of doing this. We're going to blow shit up, you know, because there's a feature in private cognition that can be inflamed enough, and mm. the human societies resemble the shadow of this problem. So the kid who, all right, I could probably tell you a lot about what happens when some kid picks up an automatic weapon and goes to a public place and just opens up on the people there. 
Because what's happening in that kid's mind <laughs> is a reflection of what, of a feature of our society. And that feature mm -hmm. is, I will win whether I deserve to or not. And if I don't win, everybody dies. Mm. There's a feature of private cognition that works that way. There's a feature of our own minds that works that way. And it gets reflected in the social mm. cognition of modern humans. And that's the thing that produces, you know, stuff like, I don't know, Hitler, Putin invading Ukraine. I mean, maybe there's maybe there's stuff I don't know about that move, but that looks you know insane to me from outside. Mm. Um, Israel pounding Gaza into dust. Um, mm. di not dissimilar, except in that case, somebody punched them first, or so it seems. Yep. 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 Mm. So I think the people there. I, I just like I mean, I remember when nine eleven happened in the United States. I had two thoughts. The first was, oh, my God, 15 people just changed the course of a nation in 12 hours. Wow, I thought it could be done. And then the second was, oh, my God, are we in trouble now? We're going to go chasing the wrong. We're going to go killing the wrong scapegoat uh, for, yeah, we're going to kill the wrong scapegoat. And that's going to create a future of enmity and hatred and blood oaths of vengeance and things like this. Both thoughts. Now, I'm not an advocate of changing the course of nations with violence. I want to be very clear about that. But I did notice that a very small group of humans in this, like the course of, I don't know, 48 hours, they radically altered the course of an entire nation that made me realize that the principle was real small number of people i just imagine the you know i'm trying to figure out what's the opposite of a bomb and how do we make one <laughs> <laughs> what's the opposite of a bomb yeah yeah what's the yeah. human relational opposite of a bomb and how do we make one i want to make the opposite of a bomb <laughs> I want something that heals things back together explosively and contagiously. It just starts crystallizing the whole network toward, you know, intelligent unity. I can imagine it. I can see it in my mind. It's possible. Yes, yes, yes. It's possible. <laughs> Donald Trump doesn't occur to me right now, but um, uh, what occurs to me is I've come across you know, um, such what appears to be opposites, but they may just be complementary you know, at, a, at a level that, uh, you know, that, that's, that, we're not, that I'm not enough familiar with, you know, because it's, it's not discussed enough. And, I mean, you and me are like, what, what you're writing, so rare, you know, and, but it's so appealing, right? Um, mm. And I, it would be even better if um, there were a few more people who could engage at your level so that there can be interaction on it, you know, not just pedantic interaction as to what do you mean and what do you mean, but like, yes, giving, you know, people doing their own homework, right? And then reflecting and then, you know, uh, it, um, passing and, you know, um, weaving. Or actually, in you know, or actually initiating projects. Ah, even better. Fantastic. Yeah, like yeah. doing stuff That's together. What, that's what I want to do. I mean, I mean, I'm good at coddling people together. You know, like, um, a lot of people, because of low confidence, you know, um, I, I like to say, "Oh, I don't understand. I don't know where to start." Come, come, come. You know, because how did this religious look? Happen? We can take them to nursery school. Mm. If that's the case, <laughs> we can do very simple, um, exploratory stuff together. So that they yeah. get a taste for the water. We don't have to throw them in the water. They don't have to become, you know, mercenaries or something. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. We just yeah. introduce them to the water a little bit at a time and say, oh, hey, are you comfortable here? Okay, let's go to the next step. Beautiful. You know? 
we can learn together yeah. how to do this in the same way your mother attended the mind of your childhood. Mm. Right? We can start out with the presumption that we're all intelligent, playful, creative human beings together. Yes. And then we can just yes. make simple moves, you know, like a kid learning how to stand up. All right, we can do it. Yep. We can do it. <laughs> you know, it's not hard to do. Humans naturally are good at this. You can get them doing this kind of thing. I and think. Then, then, yeah, yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Indonesia. Indonesia. I mean, I do have a small group I experiment with. Mm. You know, we try some actual stuff. I'm not just talking. Um, mm. And I'm not, I guess, I'm afraid of being pedantic. I want to be active, not pedantic. Mm. Okay. You, you want to be substantial. I mean, you, you want to fail. Yeah, I want to do. I, mean, I Never mind. I mean, you know. And yeah, let's so fail. You know, I, as long I as we're fail. doing something, yeah. no problem. Yeah. Mm. That's it. That's it. That's it. it, it and I'm... As you were mentioning it, I was thinking of the school in, the, in my village and the kids and the teachers. I and wonder stuff. about that. Man, that must be amazing. Mm. What's that like? Have you been in there? Have you been in a classroom? Do you know how they relate with yeah. the children? Um, the, um, the, 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 the school is not good. The school is not great. Yeah. By, by ah. means, you know, the, it doesn't open them. But they're not bad compared to other schools as well. They're not too kind of like nannish or monitor, you know, like the teachers uh -huh. are very strict. And don't, they're not that either. But on the other I hand, copy. they don't uh, um, they don't allow for any creativity. They, they want them to follow the rules and, you know, and then after Yeah, it that, sounds typically yeah. Western. Mm. Yeah, regimented. Or worse. Stuff. Yeah, regimented. Yeah. Yes. Re regimented. So, but when the kids come out of uh, school, right, back to their villages and so back and all that, they play. To me, they're learning hell of a lot when they're playing and when they are with their families, they're imitating their dogs. They're preparing because, you know, the parents are preparing for somebody's wedding or a feast. They're helping out and they're watching over, watching over people. And parents are also going to the, to their uh, plot of land and, you know, planting um, rice. They're helping the parents uh, with, with planting the rice and tending to the garden and stuff like that. So ah. Overall, they're apprenticing. At the, the bigger role for them is not what I go to school and then after school I must go and get a job. No, the bigger thing is like in the case of the girls, right? Oh, I'll be I'll I'll be a mother, right? So ah. they become good mothers. Right, and they become good healers of all taking taking care of people. They seem to learn. Mm -hmm. because yes, because of, it um, is traditional to take care of each other. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. And right. So we, we we just need to expand that to because uh, expand that to hey, whether you choose to do it at home or you choose to do a bigger thing, meaning between villages, right? Whether it's medical things or even computers or all the other things right, that you need to do in, 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 in today's world, right? If not, you'll get bullied by countries that do, you know, with weapons, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you, you've got to get your get, act together to a level that you are able to defend yourself too. You, you make enough, you're productive enough, right? You're making enough uh, returns so that enough of your people can be soldiers like they were, like societies were. Up to I know, like but now will come the malware. I'm afraid oh. once it's like it comes with the police and the soldiers to have soldiers, you have money problems, you need money. Now, what will happen to the village? I am afraid. I hear you, though. Please continue with your thought. I see. So good, good. Yeah, I, I like, like your candidness. Because you know what, what it is when you mentioned that, you know, one thing, one, I agree, you know, wow, I have to pay attention to that. You're, you're right. What do we do about how do we anticipate? The other thing that comes to me is, you know, when the, the societies were very strong, the villagers didn't have police, but they had plain clothes, intel, 
they didn't need any arms to 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 to, to help uh, the strongest uh -huh. villages because they were able to anticipate somewhat like you know in nature how how is it that there is quite a lot of law and order in a tropical forest i mean we think of, of actually in, there's in, not of law and Bangkok. order i'm not sure that there's a lot of well maybe i'm not understanding you properly yet um i'm not sure there's a lot of law and order uh there's a lot of non de not defecting but go ahead do you mean uh, law and order between the insects and the plants and the animals? Do you mean that that kind of law, or between tribes? No, I I mean uh, between the ten thousand species. Oh, okay, you know. yeah, yeah. Like, I just uh, I I mean, there's those. something there, but I don't think it's law and order. It's intimacy. Ah, uh, okay. Right, it's That's one animal in a billion bodies. Hmm. So they don't defect from intimacy, therefore no laws are required and there are no orders. So, you see, like, they can share the same, I mean, like, you have birds and you have insects yes. and lizards and ants and in the tree, and they can have, like, kind of like unawarely share the space. Yes, right? yep. But if the lizard get hungry, the, the insect better move. If the bird gets hungry, so, yeah, all of that. But you know, like when you when you're going walking through a forest, whatever, that seems like a minority. You know, like the exception is right. Yes, yeah, the the food eating and stuff. But that is not the capital. That's not uh, versus in the case of human beings, we've made it like the capital issue, and it it's not just we've made it. It really is a, a big deal that um um we um. Uh, We've gone downhill, you know. We've, yes. We've, um, no, we're collapsing you know? toward the worst potentials of our species rapidly. Mm. Together, we're all contributing mm. to this collapse actively instead of doing any other thing. And, yeah, and mostly, mm. I think it's because A, we don't know what to do, and B, it doesn't mm. pay as well. Thankfully, now I'm old enough, I don't care. <laughs> I want to do something meaningful. If I have to mm. pay to do something meaningful, fine. Let's go. You know? Let's go. Okay. 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 Yeah, I want to I want to run hey, the experiments. This, well, um Darren, this yes. model that you have, right? Um would you do you think it has to be done in the U.S. or it can be done in another country or it can be done? In it would be very, um, be very radical to be done somewhere else. But yeah, it could be done anywhere. I see. Okay. In fact, I argue, I would argue that it's basically what nature usually is up to. Right? Uh -huh. If you just That's observe true. nature, she's doing this set of things so what... that humans could do really well together. And they naturally mm -hmm. do it really well together wherever that isn't captured or interfered with. Yep. Okay, okay, okay. Um, but yeah, okay. the system as a system, it could be done anywhere. It can be done with okay. existing technology. It would change. I honestly, I don't believe if we could actually produce what I have in mind, I don't think governments mm -hmm. would last another four years. We can do something so much better than governments that I'm really shocked nobody's had the idea to do that. Yes, yes. Okay, great, great. So, um, what uh, basically you, you, you can envisage the, the model that you have in mind, and I can imagine, right, I, uh, the, the model you have in mind, and within it, you know, uh, teams of five, for example, doing um, problem solving. And add it together, right? It, it, um, it yeah, helps. they can they can synergize with other teams easily. Uh, In okay. fact, they're highly motivated to synergize with other teams. Okay. Sweet. Essentially, there's a kind of money which is something more like fulfillment that we can pay the humans, and they can also make money with the analytics they produce. 
without those mm -hmm. analytics being traced to them personally so that they can have privacy. Fantastic, fantastic. Because that's what, I mean, in, 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 in like in Indonesia, they like that. They want, uh, they pretty much want that because um, they're not totally free from their um, military phobia. Yes, right? for good reason. So, Eventually the soldiers will come. They may not be here today, but someday they yeah. are coming, you know? Yeah. <laughs> right? Everyone knows this. All the old people know mm. it. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Hmm. Mm. Okay. Um, so they, I mean, like on Facebook and stuff, nearly all of them don't use their own names, you know? Um, right. They, Why would you use your own name? It doesn't make any sense. For most purposes, it's dangerous. Um, Darren, were you um, were you in the internet when there wasn't any um, any web and stuff? There was just mailing lists. I'm a computer technician. Because... I've been working with computers since 1981. Wow. Um, okay. There you are. I because... have done some programming. I watched the birth of the internet uh, long ago. In the beginning, we used to have what were called bulletin board systems. Yeah, BBS and you would, yeah. you know, you would dial. Yeah, BBS is you dial up with a, you know, you'd have a twelve hundred or twenty four hundred baud modem. You dial up with a modem. This would, you know, you'd have some sort of a validation uh, exchange with the server, and then you know you were a user on a BBS. Most of those were used okay. for. Um, Sharing cultural objects, yep. uh, art, porn, computer mm. programs, games, yes. particularly um, media. No, that, yeah. Well, why I asked Darren, I was trying to get a hold of this. The, the early days of the internet, right? Um, pretty much. There wasn't any pseudonyms, pseudonyms you know, the, the, the mailing list and um, maybe the soft culture. Um, Wait, you know, are you sure? Um, what in what uh, BBSs were was it not pseudo pseudonymous? Because you had you had BBS, usernames. No, yeah, BBSs had. Oh, in the beginning of the problem. internet. Yeah. Oh, um, yes, maybe mostly true. Campus uh, background, maybe because of uh -huh. academic background, perhaps because I, because um, I worked at the at that time I was working for a company IP shop in uh, Toronto, yeah. And, oh yeah. Um, and you know there was I saw the value of us being able to recognize oh this guy and I was like, there's oh yeah. You know. Yes. And, yes. Um, in a trustworthy it, situation. Well, you'd still probably want the option of pseudonyms, but in a yes. trustworthy situation, you'd use yep. your your primary name. Yep. I imagine. Mm -hmm. Although, you know, with indigenous cultures, they didn't have names like Bob or Tony. I mean, and their names would change under certain conditions. Mm. Uh, it seems to me um, yep. like if you marry Maybe. into a new f yeah there's lots of conditions that would change your name and uh, why yeah, right. why do you mention it so okay let me make sure I'm hearing you so you're saying something like uh, I remember conditions under which it was very useful to know precisely who I'm speaking to no masquerading were you saying something like that? that? that um, going going to the heart of the matter, you know, just what you said. Yeah. Don't um, the speaker should not be should not be split from the uh, speech. Uh, value is, right. Yeah. You know. Of, yeah. I mean, on the other hand, um, there's ten okay. different people inside me, and it's not because I'm schizophrenic. I'm human. Ah. Uh, yes. 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 So now what? Do all, are, must all of them bear the responsibility for the voice of any of them? Yes, yes. No, no, no. 
Well, I don't know. I'm not saying yes or no. I'm just saying um, I, I hear you. it's a complicated I, I mean, question, right? Like, I want to actually entertain the question. Mm. Yes, yes. I think what it is is for enough for some for enough things. Maybe all uh, you know what? Maybe at the ethical things we want to. We, the, the issue is where do we want accountability and where do yes. we want this? Right? And There's I would fact. say that. Um... Most of the time when we want accountability, something has gone really badly wrong already. Right, like, yeah, by the time we need accountability, relational you... intimacy is broken down dramatically. Why don't you want the exploratory and why do you want them to wait till they are sure? before they open their mouth? Why don't you want them to come in with the yeah. inclinations? Yes. And why don't you have language that explicitly allows, enables that? You know? Yes, so that yes. The worst thing that can, <laughs> it's not the only, this isn't the only truth, but a fundamental principle is like, once um, human cognition becomes oriented toward indicting someone or something, mm -hmm. it breaks down. It's no longer very intelligent. It's making a mess. Vulnerability of the space. The space must allow for lots yes. of vulnerability. Yes. Yes, and yes. Not... I mean, that's more brilliant than what I would say. Um, that's really brilliant, what you're saying there. You're saying um, it's crucial that we allow mm. the play, the natural play of explorative learning and discovery and making mistakes and getting it wrong, you know, um, and all kinds of I mean, other things that disappear like once. Space. Go ahead. It should be children ready, you know? Yeah. What, right. what is, I mean, the, 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 what a, what a brilliant thing, you know, you, you, by a video expansion, you really made it for me. Um, Darren, then he said, <laughs> yeah, but you, uh, the brilliant one, you were the one who said this first. I only <laughs> tried to see what you were saying. I was like, no, he's saying something even more radical than what you're saying, Darren. Uh, what I was <laughs> saying was, what I was saying was, um, by the time you're interested in indictment, you've lost most of your intelligence. And I find this yep. to be true of myself. But you mm. said something yep. crazier. You were like, uh, in an actually trusted relational context, the free play of mistake doesn't lead, and you know, experiment and discovery and learning doesn't lead to judgment. It leads to mutual benefit or something like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's crazy. Because yeah. all of this, <laughs> you're not allowed to say that. Who told you you could say things like that? <laughs> you mustn't go around saying things like that. The humans will get ideas. <laughs> so th that's it, you know, like we're we doing talking, go to school, right? And yeah. Basically play that, right? Play essentially allow the kids to teach you. The, yes. To the class. Hey, this is how we do it, you know. <laughs> This is how we dig a hole, or how we catch a tadpole. Come, you know. And yes, yes. The teachers have been stopping us, and we, you go inside there and say, you, you kind of laugh or whatever with the teacher. But can you give us a break? I mean, kind of like ah, oh, you ah, oh, you make the cop something, you know, to distract her while you go back to learning from the kids, and then pro maybe producing some outcomes that make the te the the old school teacher happy too. Or whatever, yes, right? exactly, so, right. Yeah, you can please the old guard and innovate at the same time, right? Mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be pure yeah. rebellion, right? Yeah, you can please and, you can please tradition and still innovate. Yep, yep. And yeah. so long as you don't become impatient, you're persistent. Uh, it should yield the better the, 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 the better result, the, the better outcome for everybody. You know, absolutely. Uh, many uh, yes, patience. Yeah. This doesn't have to be done in the next 10 seconds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. That, that would work. 
That would yeah. work. That would work, right? Because the, the kids are smart too, you know? And um, uh, they, they, they're kind of like forced to um, um, uh, accept the status quo and the teachers too, like find it maybe too difficult because they're all busy to, to, to too much of an extent to, you know, they have to do this. And kind of like a modern world riddles them with too many um, little details, too many chores in a way. What do, you, do you sense that? Um, do you sense that is part of the reason why uh, the, the change is slow and all doesn't happen? Then? No, the problem is worse. The problem is that um, the new teachers mm. should be free mm -hmm. to grow along with the children instead of to dictate the direction of growth to the children. And they know nothing but to dictate. That's it, you know? It's they're like, trained to dictate. They, and then, <laughs> in and English, they, I make a joke about this. I'm like, it's like a person holding a hard penis and they keep pointing it at you. They're dictating. <laughs> I know it's a very crude <laughs> joke, but, but, but well, yeah, in, in, in English, that's a reasonable pun. And it makes sense. Mm. It's like they're hitting you over the head with the hardened member of authority. No one likes that. And it's a shitty job. Like no teacher would want, <laughs> no teacher would ever act that way or want that if they were having the experience of learning and growing with the children. And, they're, and nobody's going to tell me that we can't produce that. We got the teacher on site. We got the kids on site. You got them together. You should be able to pull off miracles. It might take you a little while to figure out how, but don't tell me you can't. Yep. I've seen it done. I've participated in it in schools where I had a teacher who was like, we're going to take the one kid in this class who can't write at all. And we're going to get that kid writing essays that, that are powerful and blow people away. Right. I mean, here's a, here's a secret that will blow your mind. In 1994 or something, no way, two probably, I, um, I took an English class. I hadn't been in school since I was 12. I, I never went to high school. I'm, I'm a self-educated person. Oh. Anyway, I took an English class and because uh, I'm a writer. Mm. And the teacher asked me to teach the class with him next semester, so I did. Mm. And um, what I discovered was pretty amazing. So there were about 90 kids. They ranged in age from 16 to 26. Uh, we mm. had three classes of about 30 kids apiece. They were mostly upper middle class white kids. Um, most of them were like B, B plus average, uh, coming into junior college from high school. Okay. Of those 90 American kids in a wealthy suburb, suburban town, uh, four of them could reasonably produce a written sentence in their only language. And two of them could comp compose a paragraph. Wow. Those kids sucked at understanding the only, or speaking or writing the only language they speak. They were abysmal at it. Um, and I was blown away because I was, I'm hyperlexic. I have a natural affine relationship with language and particularly mm. English I've been that way since I was very little so for me this was staggeringly shocking I could I was like I expected them to have more education than I had and they had catastrophically less education than I had though they had been right they had been in school an additional six years compared to and kind of like, you know, somewhat role model parents too, yeah? I suppose, I don't know. I mean, is literacy... 
Interior. Uh, no, nah, my parents weren't. My parents weren't particularly intelligent, but they did read books, and they did read books to me. And I think my mm. parents were frightened a little bit. I know my mom was. I don't think my dad was, but my mom was scared because I remember. Um, I mean, I was reading science fiction novels when I was five, maybe earlier. Um, uh, who 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 brought them to you? Oh, my parents. I told them what I wanted. Oh, how did you yeah, know? Yeah, I had what, seen. Uh, so, like, I had seen advertisements for 2001: A Space Odyssey when I was watching uh, Star Trek, and I knew what okay. the book was about. And I read science fiction stories already myself. Mm -hmm. I could read them by myself. So I asked my mom to get me that book, and she's like, "That's a grown-up book." And I was like, "I want that book. Yeah, well, that's the book I want to read." <laughs> So then I got it and I read it. And my parents ended up reading it. And in a way, I was kind of educating them because I had a lot of books. Eventually, I became a book thief. <laughs> That's a story for another time. <laughs> I only stole books to read them, though. I didn't steal like valuable books and sell them. I just I stole okay. books to read them when I was a runaway so I didn't have oh. any access yeah when I was a runaway I used to steal books to read them. Oh. You, you said earlier that you know um, yourself taught yourself from 12 years old like um, that would have been like almost unheard of isn't it no there are, there are um, okay especially these days it's different now um, there are a lot of children who are there's a cohort of young people who naturally become self-educating to varying degrees some of them become prodigies um some of them become nobodies right some of them just disappear uh some of them go mad because they're lonely um but yeah there's like i know a couple other <laughs> every once in a while someone will sniff me out and they'll approach me and they'll go like, uh, when did you, you know, what were you reading when you were a child? And I'll say science fiction. And they're like, how about when you were little? And I'll say science fiction. And they'll go like, yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> you know? Because <laughs> um, like recently somebody sniffed me out and they were like, you're one of, you're just like me. You're a feral you're a feral kid who lived in the wilderness and you're someone who's read a few thousand books and not two. Right. Um, and they recognize the fingerprint of my mind. Right. And I recognize theirs when we have conversations, it's like I'm talking to my twin or something. It's ridiculous. Yeah. There are kids that are like that. I imagine all over the world. But like, say, if, if you were like, if you were not going to school, <coughs> were you still at home? You know, I like, ran away from you home. Were... Wow. No, so I ran where away. Did you... wow. I lived in where the forest. You... Really? I lived in the, wow. in the forest in the Russian River. Yeah. In California. Oh. Wow. I mean, you just, you just find it hard to believe that people would do that in a first world country, you know? <laughs> that's what number two if you i would have thought that the the comforts i mean you want a mix of the two not just be in the forest. but was home that bad that you had that that you didn't miss it i would have been killed if i stayed in that town wow um i became by, by, like by most likely whom other young troublemakers like myself, hoodlums. Okay. <laughs> I went from being like a straight A student to being a little bit of a hoodlum. And uh -huh. where I was living in Stockton, things were pretty bad there, even though we lived in a good part of town. And I eventually mm -hmm. ended up in various kinds of trouble with young criminals. Now, it's not as serious uh, as, like, gang life is. That shit's really serious. This is pretty very minor compared to that. 
But um, yeah, I basically, I realized that if I stay there, I was 13. I realized mm -hmm. if I stay here, I will either end up in prison or dead. Um. So given that belief, anything's mm -hmm. better than either of those outcomes, pretty much anything. So even just like like living outside is better. Mm. So eventually, I made it out. It took a few attempts. Oh wow! And then you were able to be out for 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 years on stretch and a stretch. Yeah, I came home in like the last half of seventeen, so I was out for three and a half, something like that. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. Wow. Um, your parents, I mean, your parents would have been like, um, I mean, both sad and mad, no? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Especially, I, I mean, know, I I mean this, is, this is very personal, but, um, yeah, I hear you. but uh, my mom was relatively indifferent and I ran away to near where she was living. Because oh. it was by visiting her that I realized that there was this enclave in the forest where it was a bunch of basically old hippies. Oh, uh, wow. So there was like this enclave and it was very um, richly cultural, unlike where I was living, mm. which was like zero culture, like dead culture. <laughs> So yeah, I wanted I wanted the culture. I couldn't access the culture because I wasn't an adult. But I didn't want to okay. be in Stockton anymore, you know, trying to figure out how to steal cars with my buddy so we could get some weed or whatever the fucking, you know, agenda was. Um yeah, I just I didn't want to be in that place anymore and I did not get along with my dad who I was living with. So I went to the forest and you know, some adults helped me. I made it through okay. Nothing horrible happened to me while I was on the street. I hitchhiked around, you know, um, didn't eat much food. A lot of fasting. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. But um, I, I hitchhiked through the U.S. For really? Six months. Mm. Wow. College. Wow, yeah, that's crazy. College. Yeah, it was fun. Uh, was yeah, good. that's that's really intense. A, um, was, in what year were you hitchhiking? I mean, I'm hitchhiking in like the late seventies, early eighties. Mine was um, nineteen eighty, from January. See. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, not not a dissimilar time. Let's see, how old was I in eighty? Mm. But. You know, it's, it's quite, it was fun. I mean, it was a different experience. I mean, it was a rich experience. I stood out, you know. Um, like a I sore thumb. Buddy. Yeah. Well, in the South, right, it was like impossible to get uh -huh. a right. Right. Yeah. 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 And we learned some codes and stuff. So I said, hmm, how, how do I overcome this? Ah, I've got to find a white guy, right? Um, <laughs> to, uh <-huh. laughs> to hitchhike with, right? Yeah, so I said, oh, brilliant. Yeah, yeah, you have to hitchhike by first hitch. You have to racially hitchhike before you vehicularly hitchhike, <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's and hilarious. I, 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 oh my god! Yeah, I came across the, the really uh, solid guy. You know, my hair was long, right? And ah. there was this guy. I, I, I was on my way first just to go to uh, New Orleans for Mardi Gras. Hey, talk about that, you know. We're talking at a very opportune, pertinent time because Mardi Gras is going to be happening soon in uh, now to about, about this time of the year, right? 1980, yeah? Oh, uh, yeah. Before. yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I, I want to go to New Orleans, you know. And then, so I, with my buddy, I'd reached up to Atlanta, right? He, from college, right? Hitchhiking with him to Atlanta. So wow. from Atlanta, I thought, to um, New Orleans three days, day in, day out I go to the exit, you know, which is a bit of a it's not that easy to go from downtown Atlanta, like Salvation Army or something like that to, um, <laughs> sure. uh, <laughs> to the exit so anyway, 
three days and I couldn't get a ride. Nobody was stopping oh. me anywhere. Okay. So I said, okay, I'll take a Greyhound to um, New Orleans. I go to New Orleans and that was heaven for me. There was like the hobos and the hippies from everywhere. Oh, Mardi yeah. Gras. And that yeah. guy looked like Jesus Christ in a hair. Uh-huh. Yeah. The oldest and stuff, blonde hair. And Brilliant. Like me. Yeah. Indian guru for him. <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> so we got we got along really, really quite well, like in a house on fire. Um Beautiful. so um yeah, with he had been hitchhiking for like ten years, you know. So um oh, that, wow. with him, um the, the world was a different world, you know, because people would stop for him, right? I, right. I would be like back back a bit in the back and then when, when the car stopped, I'll run you know, and people will see uh, they're safe enough. So it's good, right? I went all around, quite a bit of time in Boulder, Colorado and Kansas City, where his home was. And then um, I hit, I wanted to, following the Grateful Dead, I was huh. wanting to follow, you know, to uh, Mount McKinley you know, in Canada, uh, but got stopped at the border. The Canadians wouldn't let me in. So I um, spent no some passport. time in Seattle and- yeah, no. Yeah, my uh, I had a passport. Oh. Know, I, it was university and all that, so all all was good. You know, I went to university in Virginia, Charlottesville, mm. right? Oh yeah. After my university, but the student visa runs out after you are a student. You know, the, um, the visa has got a termination date. Uh. So when I, my plan was uh, to to go to um uh, to the to the concert. Uh, the last uh, mm-hmm. you know, Grateful Dead concert happens in like a, the Equinox or something of that sort. You know, uh, no, the I'm with you. One of those dates, yeah. Well, the day when there's uh, the largest amount of light, right, in Alaska. Anyway, and I would come back because the, the flight was out of Seattle, but the Canadian said, no, 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 your your visa, your um, your your American visa is um over so they won't let you back into america so since they won't let you back into america we can't let you into canada ah, i see yeah i did not need a visa to canada canada being in the commonwealth mm-hmm. malaysia is in the there was no need for a malaysian to ha- have a visa to enter canada right? ah, i see uh, yeah uh-huh. you know but mm-hmm. th- it was on the grounds that i wouldn't be allowed to Leave. I wouldn't be, you know, if if, it, if my basis was I was flying out of Seattle, I wouldn't be allowed to enter. And in that case, I would have not had enough money and whatever. It's pretty obvious. Canada can stop me from entering Canada, not on the grounds that I don't have a visa, right? But on the grounds that do you have enough money to sustain yourself when you're right. in Canada? Yeah. So that's reasonable. You know, pretty much all the world countries yes. all over the world have women, right? And exactly. Shows, yeah. I didn't prepare for that because on, on the thing that you know, I am just going to come. I put it. Go to the concert. Come back. Right. Get on my plane. And I'm home. I don't want to be here. You know, <laughs> like, but uh, no. Yeah. That, that, I mean, the, the, it's, you it's had a me, short-term me, goal. You know. Yeah. You, me you had a short-term really goal. Like, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Me not realizing immigration things in a black and white, in a very strict way, that's pretty much they have to, yeah? Uh, but me, um, it, it didn't fully occur to me, you know, because, you know, in my head, I worked out, I'm still in America because I'm going to Alaska, man. Uh-huh. You know? Right. But it, it, didn't, the, 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 it didn't register in my head that, you know, hey, you are, doesn't matter what you think, you know? <laughs> The, it's so funny you effect. say that. It's really mm-hmm. funny that you say that because I was just thinking about when I was a runaway and when I was hitchhiking. Mm. I was so naive mm. <laughs> that it <laughs> literally didn't occur to me even slightly mm. that I might want to be careful because what sort of an adult picks up a 13-year-old boy on the side of the road? Ah, uh, yes. That's Never cool. even occurred but, to me. 
to you. That I was filtering the adults, right? Mm. And I'm filtering them in a specific direction, mm. right? Which is has some interest in a 13 year old kid. Mm. <laughs> now, thankfully, yeah. um, only I don't know how many times I was near trouble. Mm -hmm. But only twice did I actually get close to trouble. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. And both times I was able to, uh, to kind of like if, uh, avoid them. Yes, both times I was able to resolve the situation by acting tough. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Guys like I drives mean, past my stop, and I'm like, "Hey, my mm -hmm. stop's back there," and he's not not speaking to me and it's late uh -huh. at night and we're out in the middle of nowhere yeah. and i just basically said i will mm. cut your fucking head off with my pocket knife i will stab you right now in the neck if you don't pull this car over and he was like boop <laughs> car over oh. i got out <laughs> yeah oh wow oh so did you did you do you actually have a knife then Yes, I did. How oh, good! I care. I used to carry a dagger, actually, mm -hmm. little dagger. You're not that naive, then. Uh, I was. It's just that in this case, oh. I realized, um, like, okay, yeah, I, <laughs> I can uh, still I be. I can mm -hmm. still be very naive. I'm not mm. cunning the way some people are cunning. Um, mm. And I honestly, it never once occurred to me that most mm. of the people that would like, that most of the people that would stop for a kid that looked like me mm. would probably have ulterior motives or at least a goodly, you know, some portion of the people, well, right? You never occurred to me one time not is, once is it is it is it because okay hey uh, darren when i was in the u.s too right like mm -hmm. um i mean the, the country was a different country in the sense that um i would have thought um uh it's nowhere as dangerous as it is now maybe me i would agree yeah. Also, I was in a strange, um, I was in a strange subcontext, right? I was in the Russian River. So there's a lot of, basically the three primary, okay, this is going to be really bad, I'm going to say here, but um, the three primary populations there were rednecks, homosexuals, and hippies. Oh. And the hippies and the homosexuals got along fine. The rednecks hated both the other camps pretty much though got along better with the hippies than oh, okay. the gay people so that was the context there and mm. obviously you know <laughs> yeah i could have gotten a lot of trouble but i never did i never did mm. no one ever hurt me oh so, so growing up up to the i mean up to the age of you leaving home it, you, you hadn't been exposed to the dangers of such dangers as much I mean, no, it, not at all i was catastrophic mm. you have no idea how naive i was in oh, your wildest yeah. estimations you will underestimate my naivete <laughs> <laughs> oh, i was okay. you know yeah i was a, I, I was very intelligent and skillful in certain ways <laughs> But yeah. my God, was I naive. It's just one of the feelings I've always had, yeah. Mm. It never even... Okay, look, <laughs> let me be really clear about this so you can understand the depth. Not only did it never occur to me that I was attracting the people who would have some interest in a 13-year-old boy, ever. It never occurred to me. Not only that. It never <laughs> occurred to me that it didn't occur to me until just now. 40 oh. something years later, 50 years later. It never occurred to me that it didn't occur to me until this conversation today. Right? That's oh. how naive I am. <laughs>
I never realized yeah. that I didn't realize <laughs> until just now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's that bad. You know, to me, in my when I got rights, when I started getting rights and stuff, the people who were picking us up were so generous. That's made a big difference and innocent. You know, usually it'd be like a small town somewhere, and they, you know, they throw in some weed or, and then um, uh -huh. beers at yeah. the back. Yeah, yeah, right. And, uh, yeah, some of that too. House. Yeah. Mm. And um, all the, beautiful it was, right? Beautiful it was. I mean, no, nowhere else in the world, I yeah. think, I, I mean, I, could you get that? No, because, you know? yeah, it's true, because the, the counterculture in the United States at that time was still um, kind of blossoming mm. uh, a little bit. And how old were you? Were you like 18, 19, were you like 20 or something? 20, yeah, I would have been yeah. um, 21. Cool, like that. Okay, yeah, yeah, perfect. So, um, you know, you present to the drivers, uh, obviously, something they might find fascinating and uh <laughs> adventurous right? mm. to some of them yep um <laughs> so that worked in your favor but yeah it was pretty good like uh most people were very kind some people gave me money or bought me food um mm. Some people asked me, you know, like, how do you survive? They were curious. Uh, occasionally, like if it was raining or something, somebody would be like, hey, you can just crash at our place if you want, you know. Mm. And obviously that could be very dangerous, but it never turned out to be, not once. Because, I mean, I was 22, so it didn't, that occur, didn't occur to me, you know. Um, anything happened to me, I... I I was least concerned about, I mean, I didn't even get there. To me, it's like, how do I get a ride? I want to hitchhike, I don't have the money to. Yeah, that's all I was oh. concerned with too. I was just like, how do I get to where I'm going? I wasn't thinking about <laughs> uh, why someone would or wouldn't stop to pick me up. Hmm. In other words, there was no, um, there was no meta reflection, right? Hmm. Yeah. What was there was no metacognition well, yeah. I mean, about not yeah. Yeah, no metacognition yeah. about my circumstance. And Whereas you must have I, had some by your age. Yeah. I mean um more I mean um but, but you know violence wasn't you know like you didn't have the school shootings you didn't have <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, the you know, malware you, you the malware wasn't concentrated yet. Yeah, you know, um, and you know, say for example, you know, people may say, okay, you know, the you know, blacks are dangerous or whatever, but they were dangerous <laughs> to me, right? You know, I, I, I'm almost black, you know, so right, exactly. Uh, so, um, you know, what, yeah, they're um, more likely I, to but, see you as an ally than as um, an enemy or prey. Yeah, and um, and I wanted to try it. I desperately, I had to, you know, because part of that was the American equivalent of you being a sadhu, you know, of you being like, um, <laughs> you know, in the uh, That's funny, you, yeah, you I got walk. you. Right, yeah. That, that's that a mountain. hilarious way of saying it. <laughs> Like right? you're a, so, you're a, yeah, it's the American version of you're a holy man or something. Oh, no, you have faith a in monk? nature. Oh, you have faith. I see. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. faith have, in nature. I see that. I was like, yeah, come yeah. on, don't be empty. Yeah, You're that's what I nature. had, actually. That, that is what I had mm. back then, in a way. Mm. I had faith that faith. it was possible to be myself without a house without a roof uh, without money wow. without food with nothing Amazing. i i i knew that you know money would be an issue so i had to watch out and you know you know at enough places we stopped and 
Anyway, we, we made it because we could get jobs in some places. And uh, oh yeah, little then, uh, short-term jobs. Mm, especially uh -huh. in in Boulder, Colorado, right? You know, mm. um, I remember in, in Fourth of July, I was around around about Fourth of July. I was there, and it was snowing, right? Um, mm. In Boulder, Colorado, then you know it was a bit of a surprise, but that was good climate. I mean, they had a you know like a job placement for tramps and hobos you know <laughs> but, but, but because i was with this guy called bernie bernie mcbar i forget his, forget his last name now wow bernie mcgraw yeah bernie mcgraw yeah ah. so he knew the ins and outs you know where you go and get food stamps and where you get um um day jobs right and stuff like that so i was i well, rather quickly got a after four days, I got a job as a dishwasher uh, in in, um, in, the, in in Boulder, right? Ah, oh, yeah. Um, and that was, you know, that, that was fun. And the, the the pay you get compared to what you need is like a uh, great because was was staying in like a ah uh, this in Boulder after a while was staying in like a uh, abandoned house in the edge of a river, kind of like the forest, right? So. Uh -huh. We had sleeping bags and stuff like rather uh, winterproof sleeping bags. So managed. That was good. You know, there were other people. Later we 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 got we met some people and we lived with in their house for a while. Very liberal. I mean, very truly liberal place. Boulder was when I was there. You know. And oh yeah. People were really yeah. very very uh, very generous. You know, on. on the first day, I remember too, Bern, um, I remember too, uh, Darren, I must tell you this, right? Uh. Um, <clears throat> I already, I had rather little money, like $25 or something like that. And I, and I had a camera and stuff. And my buddy who was hitchhiking with me said, Bala, let me borrow your camera, okay? And then he goes and pawns and fucking, <laughs> you know. Uh -huh. so it's a whole... And so, because of that, that I remember that one, the, that day, I had no more money. I had no more money and I didn't have a camera. And I was like, hmm, how am I going to solve this? Well, I, this is this, I've got to I've got to learn this and I've got to learn how to um, be without any money. So I walk along huh. the street, Pearl Street in um, Boulder, you know, it's a downtown one street uh, that is uh, walk walk only, no cars, right? So anyway, uh -huh. I walk and I see this signboard, right, uh, on, on, on the side of a building. And it said, Naropa Buddhist Institute. <laughs> uh, me, you know, that was, wow, this is like next to bumfuck US, you know, because right. earlier I'd been in Kansas City. So like, I mean, some, not even Kansas City, Salina, Kansas by the highway. Right? <laughs> this is like nowhere, you know, for me, it's like nowhere. And how come it's got a Buddhist Institute? This is my thing. This this is my, you know, like my piece culture. of my land. The culture, yeah, yeah, in the middle of America. So I said I have to go upstairs. So I go up and I see, you know, there's two guys and stuff, and I strike a conversation. And they're so wonderful. They offered, you know, one of the guys offered his place for me to stay in because his buddy was had gone off somewhere. So there was vacancy. Um, so come and stay with me and stay mm. at my place. And stay. it was great, you know, it was beautiful. Great. All it was, the whole thing was beautiful, and Seattle, my last stop was fantastic. You know, after by the time I reached like Seattle and stuff, I'm on my own. But I was walking, you know, I get I was walking, and I, and this guy in a pickup truck, you know, uh, comes past me, stops, winds his window down, looks at me, and says, "Are you going somewhere? And yeah, you know, can I take you?" I was like, "Wow!" Because. Like, <laughs> You know, they were, they could see me, you know, and I'm like, wow, it was great. It was because I, 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 I you know, to me, the folks then in Seattle were like a great above the rest of the world. They were like really friendly to um, HIV. It really is friendly. actually, okay, there is something weird about um, how to put this. So I have not traveled much. Um, I've mostly only been in central and Northern California 
throughout my entire life, I've been basically nowhere. But a couple times wow. I traveled, a couple times mm. I traveled a little bit. Um, and I went, for example, to Oregon or Washington State. Uh, mm. And I don't know, I think, um, I think that because I'm not well traveled, I probably have a, uh, <laughs> a distorted sense, but mm. the people in Oregon were very different. Um, the people in Washington were very different. It may be that it does actually seem to me that places have something that resembles a personality and that the humans in those places reflect that. Does that make any sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. the outside Things, is... Uh, something like that, yeah. That's a, yeah. I mean, I could, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the man-made pretty much, you know, I always say this, I, I know this quite well because I go to India off and on. I've gone to India quite a lot. And they're forever complaining about the outside, you know, place of dirty and this and this. And I say it's an, a manifestation of the, the sum of the minds, you know, in uh, mm -hmm. Chennai. It's true. It's, it's what you yeah, I mean, in, in Hindu culture, there are words for these things. In English, there are not. In mm -hmm. Sanskrit, there are words yeah. for these, these matters, yeah. right? You have a culture that's like, I don't know, 8,000 years older than ours. And mm. the white people think they're intelligent? What? <laughs> and you guys even think you guys are playing with Play Doh or something worse, mm. you know? Yeah. yeah My son, love... uh, he studies yeah. Advaita Vedanta. Mm. And I, he, I know there are words for all of these, like in Sanskrit and in uh, Indian philosophy, there are there's very complex, sophisticated language about all the different features of, you know, anything you might want to refer to in consciousness at all. <laughs> it's very interesting uh, compared to how it is in English. It's so much richer and, and more intelligent hey. in some ways. You, you remind me of one thing. I was talking to another uh, a buddy who, who might join us, right? Who's a good candidate to, to join our team, right? Um, I must ask you to hold. I'm getting an important call. Okay. May oh, it's it's and too we... late. I missed it. It's all oh, right. Oh, I'm here. Okay. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Maybe I'll talk about that, and and we'll um, we can continue another day, right? We've been oh, on the course, phone yes. long enough. What, what, ah, hey, the, there's a word, um, it, it, um, Darren, you know, the word we are looking for is like um, sensibility, meaning, you know, the, yes. the, the AI thing, what is it that we're looking, what is it that we're trying to get artificial intelligence to do? Intelligence, what is intelligence? You know, um, acumen, you know. But they seem that the Western world seems to not want to talk about the world, the, the word, which is even more clear in, in uh, Indian language and Tamil and some of our local languages. It's called Bhutti. Bhutti or Bhutti. Yeah. In yep. mm -hmm. You know, and Buddha's name comes from that. Buddha is not mm -hmm. his name. You know, yeah. Gautama, so, no? Gautama, but they call Buddha, it yeah. that, like Mr. Sensible. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So what I... See, I, I mean, one you, word but... in English is equanimity. Oh, equanimity, is it? Yeah, is it, it means it? not biased. You don't, um, okay. you don't collapse into extremity. You're balanced. Mm. Mm. Ah, yes. That, that, that says that. You're balanced. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What... The the I guess what to me why the Western world might trip over it is when we talk about sensibility, and in the context they are thinking of cognition. The world I mean like such a I mean the Western world when it talks about AI you'll not it's like forever going into into cognition and we are saying no the body and the mind must be both taken into account in realizing what is the right sensible to see sensible or the right thing to do which is 
which we will say is a sensible thing to do. The sensible thing to do includes what your body, which means instinct, right? What your instinctive reactions are, right? Because you're dealing with, for example, indigenous people and pretty much they're running on instinct, you know? We don't know about what cognition they have or they don't have. It doesn't matter. They're functional people on, on instinct. So sensibility, the word sense, immediately implies, you know, the five senses, for example, right? It does, Body, yeah. More cognition. Why did it, had it occurred to you or does it occur to you? Why, why does the Western world not talk about sensibility? Mm -hmm. Mm, want the question is very. The question is very broad. Um, Meaning, like say, when in the AI circles and stuff, right? When they're talking about ethics and whatever, so when <laughs> why not say, hey, what? Well, which of these LLMs are, is more sensible? Takes into account sensibility, which mm -hmm. is different from intelligence. And I think enough people would know that. Yeah. Because intelligence immediately, in a big way, kind of like blind, you know, slides or other leans towards academia, you know, leans towards. Um, it does, uh, and it, um, but the the common humans have no. Hmm. Oh, yeah. They are missing right. what you have. They are missing the experience of coherent daily life. Mm. that most of whose rules don't need to be written or declared. But I, yep, yep. So what they have and, is something really weird. They have a thing where all the rules are written and declared, and you have mm. to either obey, be ignorant of, or reject them. And one of the reasons why Trump is about to get elected in this country is because the rejection crowd is really pissy at this point in history. Everybody, all the males, all the ignorant, poorly educated males who have no fucking, <laughs> no clue about what it means to be human and yet are anyway, they want somebody who gets away with breaking the rules and they will elect that guy if, if we don't, you know, if something doesn't stop them. And it, the, the, the guy so he's the forward. opposite of sensibility, but he masquerades as sensible, right? I saw some advertising like with him between, like. between masquerading as sensible and having to be sensible to get elected and stay there. Uh, in a way from the pred other predators. You're not going to get elected if you're sensible. <laughs> yeah. There's no chance of that happening. No, 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 no. no. Yeah, that's, that's, no, that's not going to happen. Um, you, you know, the alternative. You get elected, I mean, not, okay, in America, you get elected not because you're sensible, you get elected because you're sensational. Mm. It's a society of spectacles. Right. The better your spectacle, the better the brand of spectacle that you produce, that, the more likely you are to be elected. That's sick. That's sad. I mean, and if screwed it, screwed that up so bad. I mean, like, well, okay. Ah, uh, here. Let me ask you this: Kamala Harris should not be there. Should not be up there. Should should she? I don't know. How would I tell? I mean, supposing I okay. really cared, right? Okay. How would I make the determination? Um, well, at least do I want like, uh, a pissed off parafeminist um, having a voice in the government? Yeah, I probably do. Her particularly, I'm not sure. Seems, I mean, like like a no, like a like a fly on the wall. You know, like, um, some. I don't know, know Kamala Harris's um, talk very much. Maybe I'm actually thinking of AOC. When you said her name, uh, at least AOC is, you know, I mean, I mean, like she's um, she's uh, smart. Tough. Yeah, I mean, yeah, smart. Um, she, I mean, she knows how to get attention, and it's not just 
she used to be good, but I, I, I think she's going downhill, right? By but the way, um, I've spent about 27 minutes of my life listening to politicians in 2020 acts. <laughs> okay, That's okay. something I mostly just ignore, to be clear, and also to be clear for posterity, if anyone listens to this. <laughs> I'm not okay, politically okay. well-educated. Okay. So, and you're able to, um, I guess... For whatever you do, you you it doesn't affect you too much, or you you find spots where you're not affected by it. You know, you, you operate. I have a kind of you... simple principle at this um, accelerated age that I'm at. I'm almost sixty, mm -hmm. not a kid anymore. Yeah. Yeah. The simple principle is try not to actively import suffering from outside. Uh -huh. So the news is basically all about importing suffering. Mm. So I mostly buffer that off. I may glance at it, but I don't take it seriously. And I rarely reflect on it. Okay. It's mostly just me taking the temperature of modernity. Is the apocalypse likely to happen today or next week? <laughs> mm. <laughs> um, it's mostly okay. that when I... Do you pay much attention to the news? What's your relationship with it like? Um, not much. I mean, I pay attention to the news, you know, the last five, 10 years. Um, some areas I'm a bit interested, you know, more like world issues. Well, I mean, like say India, where is it hitting? Russia, where is it hitting? Um, China, to some extent. Of course. You know, where, where is... I want to get a for orientation, right? Yes. And then being a bit more attentive, I'm still, uh, I'm still more. I'm read, I would read news that touches on our area, you know, like, uh, like what I'm talking to you about, you know, getting funding, you know, or if, if it's not funding, how how do I go to the next step, right, um, from where I am? And the um, next step in in your your village. Um, becoming a voice okay. and making connections. The next step in what? And me um, finding a way to self-sustain it, so to 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 fund it. You know, like mm -hmm. when I sent you the um, the, the, the link to um, we we movers or we founders or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Basically, allying with allying with people who would. Um, invest in us or finances or help us out you know because we've got mm. we've enough of enough if we have a team enough of us have to be um, paid right uh, uh, ah yes is, yeah such is the world so yes. paying, where can you get funding and who funds them and what what are their requirements and who has been successful that kind of um, news right um, mm -hmm. I, I keep up and then over and above that, when you see me um, writing, most of my writing is under uh, the, the under the, the substrate of it is how do we why you know why can't we be um, the same state you know develop it's called develop why can't we be the same state high state we were five hundred or six hundred years ago right in mm -hmm. my neck of the woods and in mm -hmm. particular the like like I was saying, the, the villages, yeah. Why yeah. all of the things, you know, zero crime, um, embodied currency, embodied learning, right? Why can't we mm -hmm. have that? Right? Uh, it's like, um, why can't we have what I had from zero to seven with an unconditional love mother, right? <laughs> with that, right? I can go and sleep and I want kids and I want my I want the work of hundreds of generations of my forefathers to continue instead of it going so downhill. In one generation, um, it has gone downhill too. Everybody is doing it, meaning you go around with it, fellas are doing crime and whatever, just casually. And you ask them, hey, what, yes. what the hell are you doing? And they say, hey, yes. every, you can't, you don't do it. Everybody's doing it. And I said, no. Not everybody's doing it. I'm not doing it. Come on. You know, like yeah. say, for example, a lawyer right, who's stealing and cheating and screwing his customer. Hey, don't you have faith in your intellect that you can do something else? For example, we stop 
you know, emerging. We've stopped creating anything new for 600 years. Why didn't we do part of that? That needs law too. Huh? Only, I mean, the young, young kids, the younger people are a bit ready to listen to that. The folks who are the lawyers and stuff, big names. No, they're not interested in that. They, they want to screw the system. Bloody hell, I'm so... But I guess they're not born in the kind of uh, village and unconditional love environment that I was, you know? Look, so, um, whenever you take a cohort like lawyers or doctors or yeah. dentists or teachers, hmm. you're going to find a large prevalence of what I'll call the worst common denominator, which is the people um, who... You know, but what you're actually looking at is a topology. And as you come to understand the structure of the topology, you'll be able to find mm. the people in the cohort who aren't defecting. And mm. those people will be excited to discover you as well. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Right. This is a moment of mutual appreciation, right? That's long mm -hmm. been coming. Many of us would like the dreams of our ancestors not to be flushed down the toilet in a single generation. Mm. Um, and some of us would like those dreams to be actually fulfilled. That's it. Yeah. That's it. I mean, so that's, those um, purposes live in the hearts of humans. Mm. And if we can awaken them, it will be very powerful. And mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be a cult. Yep, yep. It doesn't even have it, to be political. It can just be human. Yep. And you often, you know, in your writing, you 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 know, you you say this this is an everyday thing. Yes. yes. You know, this is this is normal. Yes. yes. <laughs> you're right. I like, think that's what those guys in the book I quoted from earlier were saying too. They're like, we have this narrative that it's impossible to change this and that humans mm -hmm. are fundamentally broken. It's not true. Mm -hmm. They're just trapped mm -hmm. in... Why are they trapped in thinking they're broken? Mm -hmm. So yeah, these are things that I, that I want to uh, keep exploring and understanding better and get people doing something around, right? Experimenting, play, grow, learn, discover, remember. Remember how we okay. can be, yeah. I'm trying to, you know, in my own way. Yeah, yeah, okay, good, good. So, you know, um, between Indonesia and um, San Francisco, you know, I'll um, on this, you know, formulate some more what what next steps we can take, right? Um, in making this happen. In making yes, me, I we let us um, let us bookmark that for our next conversation, but there are some for sure. And I'm I'm okay. absolutely willing to explore them together. <laughs> I just need to get Thank some food in me. <laughs> okay, good on you. Okay, sorry for keeping. No, no, so it's long. fine. No, this is okay. wonderful. I'm very, I'm very grateful and excited. This has been uh, profoundly educational for me. <laughs> for me, for me. It's yeah. beautiful, beautiful. Yes. You. Okay. Take care. Thank you. Catch up with you. Okay. All right, all blessings, my friend. We will talk again soon, yes? Yes, yes. Mm. Okay, bye-bye for now.